morning, everybody. I think we're live. Should be good now. Uh, we've got some fun stuff for you today. We've got a lockout contest, the high school championship lockout contest. We'll be doing that in just a minute. That starts at 11. Um, and then we also just had a code forces around, so I, I want to talk about the problems there for a bit. Because we've got a good half hour before that starts. It did just start. Uh, welcome, Thomas. Good morning, everybody in the chat. I, I don't have... Um, yeah, we'll move this over here, so it's less distracting. I don't have, like, the chat on the overlay anymore, because that was a real pain to get working. <laughs> but I might do that in the future. Um, but we had some really cool problems, so I wanted to talk about them first. Because I'm sure everybody here just finished the Code Forces round, right? Surely. I did, I did pretty well, I thought. Um, well, okay, I say that. <laughs> My rating went up, but I don't know. I, maybe I didn't do too well. We'll start with the Div 2 problems, and then we'll go from there, I guess. And yeah, should be kind of fun. I solved a bunch of them, but there, there are some that I didn't get, which I'm interested in. So let's talk about problem A. Politics. In a debate club with N, N members, including yourself, member one, there are K options to be discussed in sequence. I have not read this problem before, so learning on the fly here. During each discussion, members express their agreement or disagreement with the opinion. Let's define Y as the number of employees who agree and N is the number who disagree. So yeses and nos, okay? After each discussion, members leave the club based on the following criteria. If more members agree than disagree, the members who disagree, or so just the minority leaves, yeah, so the minority leaves, or everybody, okay? As club president, your goal is to stay in the club and maximize the number of members remaining after the meeting. You have access to each member's stance on all K opinions before the meeting starts, and you can expel any number of members, excluding yourself, before the, mem before the meeting begins. Determine the maximum number of members, including yourself, who can remain in the club after the meeting. Um, you don't need to provide the specific strategy, but only the maximum number of members that can stay. So everyone has to agree on all K of these opinions, right? Um, so let's see, This is this one member or three members? N is the number of members. So one member, three discussions. And the answer here is one. So there's one person who agrees with all of these. Um, okay, what about this? Here only you can stay. Are you member one? Which member are you? Including yourself, which which one are you? Oh, you're, you're member one. Okay, so it's how many rows are equal to member one, right? So two here, this would be two here. And then this one would be just one, just yourself. Yeah, so how many are equal? So how many strings are equal to this? That's a cool problem. I like it. Pretty neat, right? Good morning, Purple Cran. Um, yeah, count the first string with all... Yeah, yeah. So the number of strings that are equal to the first one is the answer. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's a really cool problem. So yeah, the, the simple answer is like count how many are equal to this. Um, I guess you can't leave, right? So everyone has to agree with you. So you have to kick out anyone who doesn't agree with you at some step. So you might as well just kick them out in the beginning, and then the people who are left agree with you on every issue. Boom, 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 boom. All the votes are uh, very quick. Yeah, I think it's a good problem. I like it. Did I do well? I don't know. I got top 50. We'll talk about why I did well in just a minute, though, Colin, because it's less cool than you would think, unless you're talking to Purple, Purple Cran, or somebody else. Good morning, everybody. All right. Indivisible. Uh, so we're, we're talking about the round here, but after the round, if you, if you don't want to hear about the round, you can come back at 11, and that's when things will start. So if you're interested in just the lockout contest, come back at 11. Um, otherwise, here you go. Nah, I did not do that well. <laughs> we'll talk about why I did so well in just a minute, but it was not me doing well. That was just uh, me getting really lucky with the problems having wacky weights. <laughs> I solved one problem that was interesting and I didn't solve one that everybody else solved and like I don't know and the one that I solved that was like gave me all the points It was just trivial. So we'll talk about that in a minute. 
All right, indivisible, div 2b. You're given a positive integer n, find a permutation such that for any LR pair, so for any range, the sum of this range is not divisible by, is this the length of the range? So you need to find a permutation such that for any range, the sum of the range is not divisible by the length of the range. That's got to be impossible, right? Because there's always a one somewhere. Do you have an example? Permutation has the integers from 1 to n, but 1, 2, 2 is not a permutation, yeah? And 1 through 2 is not. The first line contains a number of test descriptions follow. The size of the desired permutation. So you want a permutation of length 1. In the first example, there are no valid pairs. Oh, so the length has to be at least 2. Ah, okay, okay. I see. It still seems like it's going to be impossible pretty quick. Because you're going to get lots of even sums. Um, hmm, interesting. This one's kind of tricky, actually. I haven't seen this before, but it's it looks somewhat tricky. Let's try it. So, okay, so we need, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, for instance. So no ranges of size 2 are even. No ranges of size 3 sum to 3, modulo 3. And then no ranges of size 4 sum to 4, mod 4. And then no ranges of size 5 sum to 5. Okay, someone has an example for me. Five, six. I feel like reading chat is kind of cheating here, though. Five, six, three, four, one, two. Does this work? I mean, this is an obvious pattern, right? If this works, we have the solution to everything. Um, yeah, so the odds are... There are no adjacent odds. I guess... What are the values mod three? I don't know. So this is zero zero. So this is this one works. This works. This works. But why would this be correct? Oh, so the sum is always six, which is divisible by three. So any multiple of three, yeah. So if n mod three equals zero, then the answer is no. And if n mod 4 is equal to 0, then you have an even number of odd numbers, right? So the answer is also no. It sounds like it's almost always no. <laughs> Do they have any bigger examples? Um, all right, let me read comments. Give one e was a cool problem. Okay. Should we take a look at that in a minute? I'm stuck on div 2b. It's not possible for odd values of n. Of course not, yeah. Yeah, so it's not possible if, wait, if n is odd in general? What about 5? There are no examples where n equals 5? That's a bit surprising. Why are there no examples when n equals 5? Because it, is, it, is it the 3 case? So that works. Okay, so you can't do, yeah, so why, why does n equals 5 not work? So obviously this doesn't work because um, these three sum to 3, right? So we would have to put the 1 after the 4, I guess. Why is this one not valid, though? Oh, because these are even. Yeah, I mean, there might be a parity thing. Yeah, okay, you guys are saying if n is 1, the answer is negative 1, but why? 
yeah, give hints. I'm not, I don't, I don't, I would write a brute forcer if this were a real contest. I'm not solving this live. Um, I'm very interested in hints. It's a hard div to be. Ah, oh, there's a tutorial. Let's see. So why, if n is the sum of the whole array is divisible by n. Duh, yes, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, yeah. So if n is odd, there's no solution because this is divisible by n. Because n plus 1 is even, so this over 2 has a factor of n remaining. Otherwise, you can swap adjacent pairs. Why do you need to swap adjacent pairs? Oh, so this 3, so the 3, 4 doesn't work. I don't know. This doesn't seem like a great problem to me. Right? This sounds kind of silly because, like, how are you supposed to solve this? I mean, are, did anyone really actually figure this out on their own? Did anyone figure this out, or do you just, rec you just like, pattern find? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, okay. Sum of all elements is a good hint. Yeah. But, like, I don't know. <laughs> this feels like just a pattern find problem, right? Like, writer brute force and pattern find? Right? It's so, yeah. Guest found pattern. That's all, that's all I'm seeing here. I don't know. If that's if that's the intended solution, Adamant, come on, you can do better. You have done better. <laughs> um, I didn't solve any of Adamant's problems except for problem div two a. Oof, man, Adamant is like, yeah, Adamant. Uh, Adamant and I know opposite things. We'd be good team members. I agree, it was pretty dumb. Yeah. Okay. All right. Fine. 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 <laughs> we'll go to end of the next problem here. So this is what I did actually solve. But it took me forever because even though consecutive is in bold and in the first line of the sentence, I didn't process it. I thought they meant three num three elements of increasing indices. But what they actually said is a sequence is almost increasing if it does not contain three consecutive elements x, y, z such that x is greater than y is greater than z. So what this means is if you have a decreasing three in a row that go down, 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 then the sequence is um, bad. But if it d never has three in a row that go down every time, then it's good. And then you're given a bunch of LR queries. And for each query, you want to know is like what's the most things we can keep in the subarray so that it doesn't have three things that go down like that. I'll talk about how we did this in just a minute. Yeah, I hate the pattern finding problems too. I'm sorry, Deadpool. But it is, yeah, yeah. You can test all n less than 100 locally and after finding the pattern for n less than 10 brute force. That's finding, write a brute forcer and find the pattern is not, you know, unless there's something clever about it, I don't think that makes a good problem. And this one was nice. You can't, you can't brute force the permutations of 100 elements. Yeah, that's 100 factorial that will... Take longer than the universe has been alive in order to, to brute force. Um, so not happening there. This one was cool. Let's talk about it. Um, similar polynomials. So yes. Um, oops, this was div 1a. And here was the idea. If you had some numbers, right? So you could have 1, 2, 3, 3, 5, 4, 7. Like this is valid. Because every, if you look at every group of three adjacent numbers, they don't decrease and decrease. So this one's valid. An example of one that isn't valid would be something like this. You could have um, 1, 3, 3, 5, 4, 4, 8. So in this case, you have the 5, 4, 4 here. That's a decrease and then it stays flat. No news on Meta, Meta Hacker Cup. Sorry about that. Not yet. We don't know. Um, so this is invalid because of this group of three adjacent things. So the question is, how many things can you keep in some big array so that you never have one of these? And the greedy... We'll keep this to English, though. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to time you out, time you out here. Um, we're going to have to... Yeah, so the greedy observation here is that if you ever do have a decreasing subsequence, you always want to just delete the first thing in it. This is always optimal, I think, right? 
It always makes the most sense to me. The reason is like we want an increase later on. So if we have something that's, I'll do a more more obvious example, like a more general case. But if you have like one, three, three, let's say you have 10, five, two, and then you have a, a six here, right? We want to we wanna keep the two because the two has the biggest chance of working with the six, right? Being an increase. And we're gonna have to delete one thing no matter what. The 10 is the least, like it's, it's obviously the biggest because this is a decrease and a decrease. So it's definitely the biggest and it's the least likely to help us get an increase later on. Um, so basically we just wanna keep the two. Maybe we can honestly even just delete the five. I guess it doesn't matter whether you delete the 10 or the five. But I just always deleted the 10 and I think that's fair enough. Um, yeah, so you just keep doing that with the stack and then I use defendwick tree to do range sum. I guess you could probably do prefix sum as well. If you just did prefix sum, that would give you the same answer and it would be just as good. Um, yeah, and then to do this, I sorted my queries by right endpoint because things might be valid, right? So this 10, where were we? This 10 is valid in the beginning, but it becomes invalid once you see a two here. So we wanna process the queries at the right endpoint and we can like bucket sort them and then we can we can process like a a range range them. Yeah, so that's the idea. I can scroll through my I guess you can see my code and code forces if you want, but this is the important part of the code right here. We have the stack and then we process it one by one. How hard do I think it is to get to Usako Platinum? I am not super involved in Usako. But I would say my opinion is that Usako Platinum, like qualifying for Usako Platinum would be pretty similar to getting purple or maybe yellow on Code Forces. I think if you get yellow, you can get to platinum. Usako also, uh, since we're talking to high schoolers here, mainly there are probably a lot of high schoolers watching, Usako has, the, the problem style is different. Um, there's kind of like, there's kind of like, I want to show this, this picture to people. I ha here's my mental model of things, right? So here is this graph of, um, get me something like this. Okay. I don't want pink. What should we do? Should we do a platinum color? There you go, this looks like platinum. Oh, what have I done? Okay. Um, all right, so this is the graph, the continuum of, what should we call this? And my face is in the way now. Uh, this is the, the infinite continuum of like implementation complexity. And this is like more annoying And this is like less, maybe it's not even annoying, just like stuff, right? And in my opinion, code forces is here. Code forces is very not complicated. Most of the solutions are just like, if you see it and you're smart enough to see it, that's it. It's like 20 lines of code. Um, or like, it's a common thing, right? Maybe you have to do back to back components or something, but that's it. ICPC has a pretty wide range. ICPC is like, yeah, code forces is, is pretty small. It's like this. ICPC is probably like this. Where there are some problems where it's mostly just a math problem or mostly like just a bit problem, but those are easy and they don't really matter. So when you get to college, yeah, but then there are also like some problems that are just really annoying and just really implementation heavy, but ultimately like they're not that bad. And then I think Yusako, in my opinion, is over here. And I think this is this is like a bit counterintuitive, but I think the reason why is that there are only four problems. So in like one four hour contest, you only have four problems to test a bunch of different things, which means all of your different concepts you have to put into like, like just four problems, which means each problem needs to have a lot of concepts. So this is my, this is my like, my current opinion of like this kind of thing. So you can be really good at code forces and also not be good at Yusako just if like you're good at spotting stuff, but you're not good at implementation.
Yeah, it's mostly yellow. Okay. So there are some other people agreeing with me here. Yeah. Um, anyway. Does it matter? No. <laughs> back to back to code forces. Because at the end of the day, what we're all going for is the black letter, right? That's the goal. All right, fish graph. This is the next one. I saw a lot of people getting this wrong. I have some ideas on how. I think maybe they were trying to do some sort of DFS. If you try and do a DFS here, you're going to end up shooting yourself in the face because this is already in the foot because it's like really annoying to get right. Um, but basically, I'll summarize the problem. You have a bunch of nodes. Uh, well, you, just, you have a graph. You have a graph that might not be connected. And you have to find one of these fish graphs. Now, a fish graph is something that looks like this. So, oops. Um, a fish graph is you have a cycle of a bunch of nodes. So maybe you've got five nodes here. And then you got the little fishy tail. So you've got two other things that are one long. So this is the fish graph. An important requirement is that these two other nodes here, these cannot also be in the cycle. So this, for instance, is not a fish graph. And I think this is the case that most people were getting wrong. I don't actually know, but this is what I suspect. Yeah, I'll, I'll explain how you solve it in just a minute. It's actually not that bad. Um, but yeah, so, so this is a fish graph. So what do we do here? How do we, how do we approach this? Well, in most times when we're looking for like something in a graph, it's useful to try and find an identifying characteristic of that thing. In this particular case, the really obvious example is this node here. You've got one node with degree four. It's really obviously like the special node of the graph. They even talk about in the problem, they say there's one node with degree four. So this is the node we're going to focus on. We're going to try and find this node. And then we're going to try and verify whether this is part of, whether this like makes up a fish graph or not. So what do we need for this to make up the fish graph? Well, um, let's look at here. So a couple things. One, it needs to have degree four or more. And two, two of the adjacent edges around it need to wrap around and like touch each other, right? So if we look at this from just the perspective of this node, we can ignore everything outside of this circle. We need at least two of these edges to wrap around and touch each other. So we need like, let's say, let's say we don't know any of this stuff. This is all we see when we're looking at this node. This is all we see. We would like two of these nodes to come around and touch each other, right? Or maybe these two touch each other and these two touch each other. That's fine. The fish graph that we'll keep will be this one here, right? So here's the loop and then here's the tail. Now, there's an easy way of getting this wrong, which is what if we accidentally, yeah, what if we have things that look like this, right? What if the loop we try and keep is, let me get a brighter color to exacerbate how, how much of a problem this would be. What if the loop we try and keep is this loop here? So we try and go from this node to this node. That wouldn't work um, pretty obviously because, oops, uh, because this node is not like it's in the path, right? But the, the fish tail can't be that. So really there's a, just a really easy solution, which is we'll just take the smallest loop, right? So if we have multiple ones of these, we'll just take whichever loop is smallest. And that one is not gonna have an extra node in the cycle. Because if we have a cycle that goes like this, then, well, we're not gonna take this extra one if we don't need it. Cause it'll make the path, cause this has length at least two, right? So we're not gonna take, this is one, this is one, where you could just take this, this instead. So we're gonna try and find the smallest cycle that um, touches two things from a particular node. Now, another thing which is easy to miss is that the graph is tiny. So you can do n squared on it, that's fine. And we'll just like, yeah, so we just wanna, wanna do this. All right, so there's a little bit of implementation details left, which is, okay, how do you actually do that part, right? How do you actually um, find the smallest loop? And it's not too bad. What I did was I did a BFS outward from every one of these nodes. So each node BFS outward, and then they would like find some nodes here. Maybe this one finds these two. This one finds these two. This one doesn't find anyone, so he's dead. This guy finds this guy. And then 
on my next round of the BFS, these two see each other. What that means is the smallest path between these would be this group here. So I, I take this edge, and then I take the things going back from it here, and things going back from it here. That's the idea. Um, yeah. So I can show you the, the BFS. It's the, the code's always a little boring, but here's the BFS part. So I, I brute force all of the things that are distance one away from the root, and I add these to my queue. And then every node stores both where which edge it came from and which group it is. Where like your group is like which starting node child. And then I keep going until like two different groups wrap around together. Yeah. Okay, whatever. <laughs> you can you can look at the code on your own time. Um yeah. That's fish graph. Next one is problem C. I have no idea how to do this. I have literally no idea. I spent upwards of an hour working on this. I made no observations. I got nowhere. I didn't even simplify the problem. It wasn't that I wasn't able to code it. I just, I am not smart enough to solve this problem. I don't know what it is. And hundreds of people solved it. Almost 300 people got it, right? So who knows? But toy machine on the other hand, oh my goodness. Apply interpolation. I don't know how to do that. I know interpolation is a thing, but eh. is this just a hack pack that everybody's got? I have no idea. Okay, let me explain Toy Machine because this one is trivial. So first of all, some kind of BFS. Oh, BFS for, for problem B. Yeah, you gotta be careful with the BFS. It's a bit tricky. For problem D though, this problem is so easy. Let me show you. Okay, we're going to make it 15 wide. And I'm going to get my face out of the way. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is an amazing tool because it, they let you use it. Let me show you <laughs> how to do this problem really quick. All right, this is going to be a fun live stream. Um, the idea is the following. So you have the problem statement is they give you um, a grid that looks like this. And your moves are you can go left right, down, or up. Those are the four different moves you can make. And you have to figure out a way in 1 million moves or less to get any one of the 100,000 elements on the top into this top left square, the finished square. So the question is, how do you do that? And you can go play around with this. It's, um, I guess I'll just post the link in chat, maybe. Here's the link. If you want to go play with it. Um... But yeah, the, the idea is we're just going to come up with an algorithm that does it. And it's, it's pretty simple. So first observation, we can cycle things into this and move them around somewhat easily, right? So if we go right, uh, what is it? Right, down, sorry, left, down, right, up. What we've just done, we'll do that again here. So keep pay attention to the A. So the A goes into the corner. And then we're going to move everything down. So B through G are now out of the way for the A. And we can move A all the way to the right. So now A is out of the way. And now if we go up, we'll consider everything to this side and over. This is all going to be trash. But we'll look at B through G here, right? So now if we want B, we, we have B here. We'll move everything out of the way. We'll move our trash over and then up. Now we get C. Now we get D. Now we get E, F and G. So that would be um, how we can get the first half of these letters. It's that easy. So the f for the first half of these letters, we can put all of them in the beginning just with left, down, uh, right, up. And we just repeat this a whole bunch of times and then we're done. Left, down, right, up. That's it. So that 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 is literally half the problem, right? Just seeing left, down, right, up. Okay. Second half, <laughs> we can literally just for these things, we can just put them in the right way in the right corner the same way, right? So if we want L to be in the right corner, we'll just do the same thing but reversed. Oh, JK, I messed it up. Uh, you do right down, left up, right down. Okay, now L is in this corner here. So we can just repeatedly keep doing this, and now we can get any any element we want. 
we can either get it in the top left corner, in which case we've literally solved the problem and we're done, or we can move it to the top right corner just by doing the same thing, and that's for the elements that are h and over, right? And there's literally only one step left in this problem, which is, I might have to look at my code because I, I may have forgotten, but yeah, let's say we have k, and k is in the top right corner. So now the challenge is, how do we get k over to the left here? How do we get k to the left? And to do that, we're going to do one extra step, which is we're going to move everything over to these, these spaces here. We're going to move everything over. So we can just keep going down, right, up, right, down, right, up, right. We can just do this n times. And now we have everything over in these spaces. Okay. And we know k, k is right here. And now what we're going to do is just get k to this position here. So here's how we do it. We go right, um, up, or wait, no, right down. Yeah, yeah, right down. So, or I guess that was left down. Then you go right, up, and then right. Okay, so what we've done here effectively is the K is now blocked by this middle piece. And now if we go down left, we're done, <laughs> right? So what we need to do is just get the K blocked by this middle piece. We put the K here, uh, and then we're set. Let me do this one more time. So if we want, let's say we have the M here. So we're going to, this M, this is what we're going to put in the top left spot. So the first thing we do is we move everything over. So we have this all here. We're just going to try and get the M to the top left. So all we do is left, uh, down, right, up, right, down, right? And now the, the M is in the middle and now we just move the M over. So it's that easy. This person's officially investing in second threads LGM stocks after today's contest. <laughs> All right. We'll see. We'll see. Does that mean I went down? Does that mean I'm about to go up? If you're investing now, does that mean the, the chance of me getting LGM is increasing? It just went down today. So now buy low, sell high, right? Otherwise, you're going to be buying high, sell low. You're going to lose all your money, man. Don't want that. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Um, okay. But I did like, I, I performed almost at LGM level. Now, my question is, how on earth do you do problem C? <laughs> like, <laughs> what do you do here? I guess I'll look at the editorial with you guys, but uh, it's also 11 o'clock. Hang on. Hang on a minute. People can start playing their rounds. All right. We're going to take a pause. Maybe we will look back at problem C later. But... The, the, um, the duels are officially starting. Okay. There's a slideshow for opening ceremony. Here we go. Here's the opening ceremony. I missed it guys. I may have missed it. All right. We'll do the opening ceremony. Da, da, da. This is our own custom opening ceremony. All right. Sponsors by Art of Problem Solving, Wolfram Language, and this thing, who I am not familiar with. I'm sorry. Oh, yep. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you to me. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, all right. Schedule. So uh, if you are competing, go compete. Don't be part of this. We got people here. Welcome. Some commentators. Do you guys want to commentate with me here? Are you there? Yeah. Hello. Welcome. All right. Can everybody in chat hear these people? We got Ezra and Chris, right? Yeah. Um, also, we might have some other people joining too later. Fantastic. All right. Did I miss anything interesting in the opening ceremony? Do you want to thank our sponsors real quick? Um, yeah, sure. So um, thanks to Recursive Dragon, Art of Problem Solving, and um, Wolfram for sponsoring. Um, so Recursive Dragon does like coaching for competitive programming. Um, Art of Problem Solving does like math programs and classes, and Wolfram makes um, pool text for people to use. Awesome, awesome. Do we want to go through these one by one or um, anything in particular we should focus on in the introductory ceremonies? Um, I think most of that was just rules for participants. So for spectators, it shouldn't be that relevant. Um, I guess what you should know is that People are going to start playing rounds against each other. It's going to be 1v1, and um, eventually we'll get into 
uh, the later stages, um, a lot of participants will probably be knocked out at that point. Um, and it's double elimination style. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for the info. Uh, as a quick reminder, if you are a participant, you got to get lost. I'm sorry, but we're going to be showing people screens, so you can't be here. You can come back when you get knocked out or if your match is done, but you can't be watching the, str watching the stream. Um, awesome. Do we have a bracket? It's in the announcements. Yeah, um, the bracket is on a challenge. Um, I can link it in the chat. Here we go. All right, fantastic. Awesome. So we've one, two, three, four, five rounds probably. Yeah. So we might have up to eight rounds in the uh, losers bracket, and the uh, winners bracket is going to have, I think, six rounds or seven rounds. Two, three, four. Yeah. So seven rounds. Ah, uh, gotcha. Wait. So are we doing in this first round? Is this literally just two people playing? Or are uh, these first two like well, combined? So everyone who can play their round is going to play, and then I think uh, match seventeen, which is relying on match one, is going to just start later. I see. How many how many contestants do we have today? Um, we have around forty five contestants. Do you want to do you want to give people? I'm going to try and set up this Zoom so we can see everybody in the stream. Do you want to give people a quick summary while I do this? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so. Participants are going to be playing a series of five calls in the early rounds, and they'll get harder over time. Um, all the participants are high school students or below. Um, a lot of them are from the U.S. Uh, we have some like previous Yusuko Camp participants, Yusuko Platinum competitors, etc. Um, yeah, um, we're going to have the matches starting right now. Some of them are playing, and. The person who solves each problem first gets points, and then the problems go away. So um, points are determined based on the difficulty of problem solved, the amount of problem solved. Um, the first few rounds are going to be 20 minutes long, and the later rounds will be 30 minutes long. Awesome. Awesome. OK, what have I done? Um... All right, we will handle Zoom manually. Here we go. Here's the, the low-tech solution. <laughs> All right. And we'll hide the chat here. Even lower-tech solution. Awesome, awesome. Okay, that sounds good. Um, welcome to the contest, everyone. All right, this needs to be over here. So I can see it. Okay. All right. First, the first round is underway. Fellow commentators. Oh man, this is going to get annoying. Okay. I got to. All right. Who do you guys think we should watch here? What interesting matches are, are underway? Um, that's a good question. Um, let's see. I saw there's the Dominator one. He's also streaming his. Do you want to take a look at that, maybe? Yeah, sure. Let's go ahead and do that. All right. How do I find out for a particular contestant what room they're in? Um, okay, so we had hoped that uh, by the match number, we'd be able to find them. But I think, so G8L18M, who's Dominator's contestant, like uh, opponent, is in lower four right now. And um, Dominator is... Not in DC at the moment. All right, he might be on YouTube though. Yeah. Let's check. Let's check Code Forces. 
live in 14 hours. Oh, maybe this is a different duel. Okay. All right. Um, we can check Dominator's opponent then. <laughs> Dominator, if you're watching, you gotta leave. Here we go. Um, is the Dominator's opponent sharing screen? I believe that the Dominator match is actually being delayed right now because Dominator isn't actually ready. So um, I guess we can look at another match. Ah, uh, okay. Very interesting. All right, let's take a look. Hmm. What do we see? So is Code Force, is the Code Forces rating the one on the right here? Is this uh Yeah. In the in the lockout tournament bracket. Yeah, okay. in the bracket. It's yeah, in parentheses, yeah. yeah. All right, so what, what seems like the most fun one to watch? Probably something even. Maybe, let's take a look at Scotch Tape 13. So what room is Scotch Tape 13 in as if 17 are? Um, okay. Uh, I don't see that match happening right now. Although uh, there is a match going on right now between uh, Xiaom 1909 and Amoeba 1, which we can look at at the moment. Because okay. I think some people are just kind of getting started and getting ready. But that match is going on. So well, All right. Let's, all right. So Xiaom and Amoeba 1. Okay. What what rooms are we looking at here? Um, wait. Uh, if you look in um, Lockout for like the channel, the match is happening. Uh, let me get them to try to see as well. Oh, if they're doing their match though, they might not be able to, right? Um, yeah, let's see. I mean, they're supposed to be in VC if they're doing the match. So oh, okay. Hopefully they'll join. Yeah, apologies uh, if this is like a bit annoying. Yeah, no, <laughs> kind of am, I, am I in the lockout yeah. channels? Um, you should be. All the matches are happening in threads, if you look at those. We could take a look at uh, Skittles versus Ak Sharvin, which is a 2200 versus a uh, 1000 rated. Uh, that's happening in lower two right now. All right, let's take a look. All right, yeah, this match is actually happening, so that's good. All right, so... We said Skittles versus X Charvin. Um, okay. Which one is Skittles? Where are we? Which oh probably X Charvin is Yeah, X Charvin. Okay. Alright, here we go. Alright. They're officially going. So this is X Charvin's screen. Taking a good look at the rules, that's good to see. Yeah, yeah. Looks like the tags are disabled. Love to see that. All right, looks like Skittles, Skittles got all of them. <laughs> Skittles got the 400 and the 500 apparently. It appears. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I was a little quick. All right. Um, 
gg to them. And that's the first first round that's done. Would we be able to take a look at Skittles versus Jatlow? Yeah, that's definitely going to be an interesting match, so uh, we should definitely look at that. Um, it's probably going to start in like 10-ish minutes, whenever. All right. Okay. Other matches. Let me figure out how to like look at... Hmm. Oh, there's a pretty good match between Ench Wolves and Ice Bear happening right now. Um, and both are sharing. So if you go in upper one, you can see Ench Wolves screen. And if you go in lower one, you can see Ice Bear. How do I see the problem statements, though? Um, you can go in the thread that they're playing in. So how, do I, how do I get that? One, two, three, or five. Uh, okay, wait. And this is in the browse channels area? Yeah. It's going to be in the tournament um, channel. But yeah, okay, wait. Here, I can link the thread. Okay, so that's where the match is happening. Lockout for, yeah. Okay, all right. Tempting to stay organized here. Okay. Um, all right. So here we go. We got the four or the five different problems. Uh, the goal here is you win if you have what eight hundred points or more. So you need the five hundred and the three hundred or the four hundred, two hundred, one hundred. Those are all forced wins. Um, and obviously, since one plus two plus three plus four plus five is an odd number there are no ties unless you run at a time um okay so this is yeah what what group is this this is ice bear yeah um it's ice bear versus and balls right now i'll take a look at the problems here All right, Div 3A. So yeah, Polycarp loves ciphers. He's invented his own cipher called repeating. I've solved this one before. Repeating cipher uses strings to encrypt the string. Um, he has up to 10 strings, and he will write down S1 once, S2 twice, S3 three times, and so on. So if you have B, A, A, B, you write down B once, the A twice, then the third B three times. Okay, so you have to print a string such that after encryption it equals t. So if this is the original, then you print which one it is. And they guarantee it's possible, so you just print like the first character, and then you print the second character, and then you add two. The third character you add three, fourth character you add four to your index, and so on. Um, the real question though is, is it worth it to even go after problem the, the 100 here? Um, it looks like most participants actually haven't gone after that problem. Um, I see Entrals is working on the uh, 1200 right now, so the last problem. Seems to be making a bit of progress there. All right, we'll read it here. Discord link, Discord link, Discord link. All right, here you go. There you go, chat. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah okay we'll take a look at the rebranding so the name of one small but proud corporation consists of n lowercase english letters the company's tried decided to try a rebranding an active marketing strategy that includes a set of measures to ensure either the brand uh or to change either the brand or its components they decided to start with the name for the purpose of the corporation 
they have hired M designers. Once a company hires the Ith designer, he immediately contributes to the creation of a new corporation name as follows. He takes the newest version of the name and replaces all the letters XI by YI and all the letters YI by XI. So he swaps two different types of letters. It's possible some of the letters do not occur in the string. It may also happen that these two are the same, in which case you would do, do nothing. The version of the name received after the work of the last designer becomes the new name of the corporation. So this manager has recently got a job at his company. Have they solved it yet? Yes, uh, I believe Enchlos has already solved it. Ah, I just got it. All right. We'll finish looking at it here, but it should be should be quite easy, right? It's div 2b. Um, yeah, but I already soaked in the spirit of teamwork and very worried about the success of the rebranding. Naturally, he can't wait to find what is the new name the corporation will receive. So you replace all the P's with M's and M's with P's and so on. Uh, there you go, yeah. You just replace all the A's with B's and, <laughs> and then you're done. Um, yeah, so it looks like a pretty easy just string manipulation problem. Oh, I guess it is a little long. So you can map each of the letters initially. You only keep track of one of each letters, one of each of the letters. Um, and then at the end, you figure out which letter each one maps to. So it shouldn't be too, too challenging. Uh, and I guess it wasn't. Right. Um, Entry levels moved to the 1100. And we're starting at around the same time. So hopefully we'll be able to finish around the same time. Too. We're starting what at the same time? Um, well, we can read the poem. Oh, we start then. reading it then. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, yeah, it's an interesting choice to go after the 1100 because the the 1000 would also be enough to win. But maybe he's betting the opponent's going after the 300. All right. So we have N burls. One Coca-Cola bottle costs A burls and one uh, bars bar costs B burls. You can buy any non-negative number of um, cola and bars. Is it possible to buy the same amount of this and spend exactly n burls? So is this just a check if the sum is equal to n, or check if n is divisible by the sum? There's a formal statement at the bottom, which I think is easier to read. Ah, here solving. we go. Okay, so you can check, you can buy any pair. They don't have to be the same number of each. Yeah. I don't know where I read the word same. Um, yeah. Okay, and then each of the integers go up to 10 to the 7. And there's only one test case. Yeah. So it seems like we can brute force how many of one of them we buy and then see if the other one's possible. Mm -hmm. All right, bruh, you can't spam stuff like this. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so in these earlier rounds, because the problems are of a lower difficulty, the actual differences and difficulties between the problems is less than they would be in higher yeah. rounds. So I think the strategy of going for the hardest problem, especially if you're high rated, is smart because they give significantly more points, even though it's not that much harder to solve. Yeah, for sure. Um, it seems like really all of these rounds are going to end with 800 or more points for one person. Yeah. Like in 20 minutes, it takes probably like three or four minutes to solve each of these. So in theory, if you pick the right problems, you can finish in, in eight minutes or so. Yep. Um, all right. So do we, are we able to see either of their screens? I'd like to be able to watch them code if we can. Do we know what, what room they're in? Um, Enchlaws is in upper one. And he is streaming. All right, Enchlos. Oh, I look. It looks like I just saw a submit. Did he just submit? Oh man. Did you guys see if he just sub submitted? Yeah, he just did, and it got accepted, so I think he wins. So he's done. All right. Yeah. I guess he's just looking in case he didn't win, trying to get one but more. But it does look like he's going to go against um, a 2200 now. 
and looks like they're going to go right away. So that could be interesting as well. All right. Conveniently right now, um, both uh, Scotch Tape and, oh, I guess his opponent left, um, they were in upper zero. So if we go in upper zero, we can kind of see what's going on in that match. Let's take a look. Um, I guess let's watch Scotch Tape here. So he's on problem B. Uh, we need. We kind of need to cut. Another, wait, there's actually another match that's going on right now. I think it's between a 2200 and a 1900. I think it's Skittles versus Jatlo. So that one's also going to be very interesting. Let's check it out. What what room are we looking in? Where's Skittles? Skittles is in lower two right now. Um, and Jatlo is in upper two. These Discord notifications or something else. All right. So Skittles is working on 1692D. Skittles has already solved the 400 and the 300 point problem. So what is, oh, I guess. Oh, just no, wait. Solved Skittles it? has solved the 400 and Jatlow has solved the 300. So it's close. Okay. All right. So Skittles just needs the 500 to win. And which problem is he looking at right now? I think he has two monitors, is my guess. It looks like mm -hmm. we're looking at his his um, editor, but he probably is looking at the problem statement right now. Right. He also names his problems really conveniently. He gives us the, the round name. Um, so, so he's like, as soon as he creates the file, we should be able to see what he's working on. Mm -hmm. And here we go. He's working on 1794C. So that's probably that's the 500, the right? Yep. It wouldn't make much sense for him to do anything else at this point. Because mm -hmm. that's all he needs to win. So his opponent's also probably going for the same problem. So it's going to be like whoever solves it first. Do you mind taking, but... a look, taking a look at the problem? Can you give us a quick summary in a minute? Yeah, sure. We're going to see what he's trying here. So in this problem, there is an array of length n where the array, the size of the array goes up to a tenth of the fifth, and they define the score of a sequence as the product of its elements divided by the size factorial. And the goal of this problem is to find the maximum, the the maximum length of a subsequence with a score of m. Um, where m is the maximum score across all of its subsequences for each of the prefixes of the array, where the, the array given is also ensured to be non-decreasing. So it's kind of a mouthful, but you want to you wanna find the maximum length of a subsequence with the maximum cost, where the cost is the product over the size factorial for each prefix of the array. Um, and this is a 1300, a div 2c. So it's not too difficult. Yeah, it looks like both participants have finished reading the problem. And um, from what I can see, Jatlo started coding with Skittles, so it's going to be a race to see if we can type it out faster. Looks like Skittles is doing some sort of two-pointer here. Mm -hmm. So the first observation in the problem is that if you were to find the maximum score across all, all subsequences, if you can choose any subsequence and you want to maximize the score, you want to maximize the elements in the subsequence since your goal is to maximize the product. So because the array is non-decreasing, you're only going to choose suffixes of the array uh, the suffixes of each prefix when you're finding the score for the prefix because those are the elements with the largest product with a fixed length. 
and then, then you, after yeah yeah wait so, go ahead and then if you brute force the the length then you know what the suffix is and you can evaluate all of the end suffixes see which one's best right but you have to solve this problem for each of the prefixes of the array so that would be n squared which is too slow with the constraints but the next observation is that because the numbers decrease as you go to the left but then if you consider how the value of the length factorial changes as you go to the left that value increases and because of that you can you can do like this two pointers almost like a two pointer sweep um, over the array as you increase the prefixes and just iterate over the length of um, like iterate over the length the, the max possible length and all what remains is to check whether the condition is true or not because the optimal length for each right for each prefix increases as the size of the prefix increases because the array elements increase because the array is not decreasing i see i see um it looks like seattle stopped streaming do we have a link to or is it over do we have a link to their yeah so skittle solved the problem um before jatlo could um but it was really close so yeah skittles oh, yeah, yeah. skittles got it congratulations skittles all right let's... oh it looks like they were seconds away from each other for accepted solutions on the problem so it's a really really close match wow. we're going through some of these rounds pretty quickly that's always nice to see um all right so we've got skittles uh, and JJ are the first to qualify here. Any upsets recently? How about this NK versus uh, Amoeba? Rip. All right. I may have accidentally just uh, shut down part of the stream. Let's double double check to make sure it worked. We're still alive. Looks like stream's live. All right. Stream is live, stream is live, stream is live. Fantastic. Fantastic. All right. Um, <laughs> okay. Let's find Arsako and Skittles. That might be most exciting here. I believe the Arsico versus Skittles match hasn't exactly started yet. We can look at a different one. Uh, NK versus Amoeba is going on, or IAD versus One Bit, or something like that. Okay, yeah, let's check out NK versus Amoeba. That looks pretty pretty epic in terms of rating. Do you know what room they're in? Um, yeah, Amoeba is in um, lower three, and I think NK you... is in upper one. Okay, we'll take a look at Amoeba and Lower 3. I think you might need to mention me in the thread for me to join it, unless I yeah, just don't sure. know how to use Discord. Gotcha. But thank you. Um, yeah, so right now, uh, Amoeba is potentially winning despite being the lower rated contestant. Ooh.
All right, Amoeba is on 914B right now. Let's take a look at the problem statement here. So we have N cards, each with a different number. Um, they take turns playing. <laughs> Alright, so it looks like it's a, a card game where you remove all, you pick a card, remove all elements less than it. Why not just remove the biggest card? Oh, do they play the cards in order? Yeah, it looks like it's in order. Or wait, they say if both players play optimally, and also a player chooses a card and removes it. So why can't you just pick the biggest one? Oh, you remove the ones that are strictly less than it. So ties can be, can be tricky. So like, if you... If you have like um, an even number of the max, then it's a losing state. But I guess if you have an odd number of the max, then it's it's a winning state, right? And if you have anything that isn't the max, it's also a winning state. Um, the Skittles versus Arsico match is happening very soon. So um, I think in the third it's happening. Sounds good. Looks like Amoeba just submitted with what appears to be a, a pretty wrong answer. Um, all right. Should we, should we check out Skittles? Yeah, let's go. So the, the most advanced round we've seen so far, Skittles versus, who's the other guy? Arsako, like you, Sako, but, but Arsako. How inclusive. Some scoreboard concerns. Hang on. What's going on here? Uh, so they're just figuring out what the format of it is because um, as the rounds go on, the problems will get harder and harder. Uh, and so they're just making sure that they're doing the right difficulty of problems. So, yeah. Yeah, it would be nice to see something a little more challenging. Because at the moment, it's kind of a, a type racer contest. Do you guys know when the round length turns into 30 minutes instead of 20? Um, yeah, I believe it's the third round onwards. So the okay. first two so, are going to be 20. So this one, this one will be 30 though, right? The Skittles round? Um, this one might also be a 20-minute round, but it's going to be slightly harder problems. Oh, okay. So I think the minimum difficulty is going to be like 1,000. Do we know whether this is round two or three? This is round two. So it's going to start at 900, actually. Um, in the tournament, it's it's in round three, um, but like we have a lot of rounds, so the format is going to be the round two format. Gotcha. All right, let's take a look. So we see coloring on a tree, detective task, points on plane, circle, metro, and constructive problem. I think coloring on a tree is one I've solved before. I do remember this. It sounds like it's from a recent round. I have solved it. Um, okay, this is a four hundred. You're given a rooted tree with n vertices. The vertices are numbered 1 to n, and the root is vertex number 1. So every vertex has a color, and you have to color the tree 
using the or by using the given colors in the smallest number of steps. Every step you choose some vertex and color all the vertices in that vertices subtree color X. In other words, for each vertex that the path from yeah, so it's just in the in the subtree. You have to color each vertex a different color from color zero. And div to b so it's the just like the number of edges in the root subtree or are these the different like they start with different colors um, they all start with zero, and you're trying to reach some configuration of colors that's given. Oh, and they give you that. I see. So I guess let's look at the first sample. So you have some tree, and why would you color everything color two? Well, I guess the idea here is that, like, if you want to change the color of a vertex, eventually you're going to have to change all the things below it. So you might as well do that first and then figure out whether you need to color the ones below it afterwards. So, because uh, you'd overwrite it if you colored your yes, parent after you yes. colored you. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it's always optimal to first start from the root and then, like, um, basically do things as close to the root as possible. So essentially it's kind of like running a DFS where you switch it if you need to switch it. And if you don't need to switch it, then you keep going. Um, and really the final answer is like how many edges to your parent are different, right? That's what you need to count. Um, yeah, something like that, yeah. All right, it looks like Arsico solved that problem. So um, yeah. You're trying to commentate, but you're moving too fast. It's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, there you go. So that's pro that's the 400, which means uh, now it's a toss-up between the 300 and the 500. Do you guys know which room Skittles is in? It'd be interesting to see what he's looking at. Yeah, let's go to lower four. All right. What's interesting in terms of strategy is, like, now that Arsico has solved the 400, um, the person who solves, if there is a person who solves the 500, they're going to automatically win the match. So actually, um, it, it's, it might be like um, counterintuitive, but you almost have to try for the 500 if you're Skittles. Because if you solve the 300, but Arsico manages to solve the 500, you automatically lose. So... But Arsico might go after the 300 himself, right? If he solves the 300, you lose as well, right? Because 3 plus 5 is 8? Well, no, he just solved the 400. So if he solves the 300, Skittles still might have a chance if he gets the 500 and the 100 and the 200. Um, yeah. Um, oh, so the 500... Yeah, I guess 500 matters most. Okay. Is that what he's looking at? 1675C. Um, no, it's actually not. Yeah. Because uh, 1819A is... Yeah, so he's looking at the 300 right now. I guess maybe he thinks Arsico is going to go for the 300 so that he'll get the upper hand. So he's trying to go for the 300 first and then they can race to the 500 together, I guess. Does this strategy make sense? Let's see. So if both players are working on the 300 right now, then I guess it is beneficial for you to work on the 300, right? If you're losing and... Um, your opponent's going for it? Yeah, so I think it relies on the fact that Skittles thinks he can get the 500 in the same time that Arsico can get the 200 and the 100. 
Because if they're both solving the 300 and then Skittle solves right before, he's going to have to solve the 500 before the other two problems get solved. Yeah. Or or snipe them. So if Arseco starts solving the, the two and then Skittles gets the 100, for instance, then it's a race to the five. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, now might be a good time to just like stop and read them if you were one of the contestants. Um, okay, let's take a look at what he's actually trying. So this is the 300, right? 1675C. Yeah. It's a very long problem statement. There's certainly some disadvantage to spending that much time reading, but... Maybe it's worth it. Commentators' names, we got me, um, Ezra, Chris, and Larry. All right. Points on a plane. Wait, was that easier? Hang on a minute. Points on a plane was the 200. All right, 300 just got solved. Wait a minute. Arsako got got three hundred, so yeah, Arsako so now has would... seven seven hundred points. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this forces Skittles to go for like every other problem because he has to solve all of the rest of them. Yeah. The so if Arsako gets anything, he wins. Yeah. So he's probably gonna go for the one hundred, but it looks like um, Skittles isn't. Um, oh no! Skittles did change problems. He yeah, he changed now. He changed just a minute ago. It looks like he didn't lose too much time, but now he's in a really tough position because Arsako has the privilege of being able to read everything, and Skittles has to be able to solve everything before him. So Skittles has to not only like be able to solve this first problem before him, but he also has to predict what Arsako is going to choose to work on here. So he's predicting the two, I guess. And in addition to predicting right, after he beats him to this one, he has to predict the next one right and beat him to that, and then he has to beat him to the third one. Whereas right now, Arsako can choose to read all three. Whichever one Skittle solves, he'll be he'll have some advantage on the other one, which is like he'll already have read it. So this is a really tough place for him. Yeah, and something that's interesting about this is <clears throat> he has to still do all of this within 13 minutes, which, like, maybe if you're in a contest, maybe you could, like, do that, but... Um, in like this type of high pressure situation, it might be hard to even like do it all in time. So that's another thing to consider. What's the tie breaking strategy if both players end up with 700 points? Um, what happens is the player who got the 700 points first will win. Uh, so you really do need literally every problem in 13 minutes. Yeah. Brutal. <laughs> Is there, um, I guess, yeah, one of the things that we talked about doing at the North American Championship lockout was making every problem worth like 101 points, 201 points, 301 points, 401 points. That way, if you solve more problems for the same total, it's better. I guess that doesn't happen super often, but I suppose it's possible if you get like a five or a two and a three, especially in harder problem sets. Um, for sure, but I think it's it's not super likely to happen in the later rounds. But I guess in the earlier rounds, that could definitely have been useful. So it looks like he has an idea for B. This is Skittles that we're watching. Yeah, B is actually from a really recent round. Um, only like a month ago. A lot of these problems I've seen, but I think it's worth mentioning for the viewers that the way the problems are selected by the bot, it filters out any problem that's been solved by either of the contestants. So although I have solved these before, uh, or solved many of them before, the contestants shouldn't have. Uh-oh. Is, is the round over? 
Yeah, it does seem that Arsico did I steal. I got the one hundred. All right, congratulations, Arsako. That was a fun run, Skittles. Um, yeah, I guess let's take a look at the standings. So we've got Arsako. Is that quarterfinals then? Arsako qualifying to quarterfinals? Yeah, that's the quarterfinals. And there's a good chance here that we've got Dominator versus JJ, depending on... If Scotch Tape is able to make an upset. And we'll see Skittles in losers for sure. Um, okay. No, thank you. Would you okay. guys... Oh, go ahead. And an update from the round we were watching before, Arsico versus Skittles. Amoeba has won that match. So um, depending on the match between Adam, GS, and Dewey, we could um, see that upper bracket get really interesting. Yeah, that is a, a mild upset between Amoeba and NK. Roughly the same rating, though. Speaking of the Scotch Tape Dominator match, it's actually very close right now. Dominator has 300 points and Scotch Tape has 200. So, and it looks like Scotch Tape has solved something else. So, right now, it's actually 300 to 300 in that match. Let's go ahead and look at that. It's in lower zero. Can you, can you invite me to it? I guess I don't have the threads here. That's some interesting strategies, too. They're going for the very low-value problems, especially since the problems haven't gotten marked as easier yet, or haven't gotten marked as harder because we're still in the earlier round still. Mm -hmm. And Dominator being significantly higher rated, it seems like it would have been a better strategy to go for the harder problems, but we'll see. They're certainly both looking at the 500 now, so we'll take a look at that. Substring removal, because anyone who gets this will win the round. You're given right. a string S of length N of lowercase Latin letters, and a substring is a contiguous sequence, so forces is a substring of code forces, but coder is not. Makes sense. You want to calculate the number of ways to remove exactly one substring from the string, such that all remaining characters are equal. Guarantee there are at least two different characters. You can remove the whole string. Um, interestingly, it looks like Scotch Tape is trying to implement the, the 400 right now. So maybe he thinks that... How much time is left? Maybe it won't solve it. There's about like 10 minutes left. Okay, interesting. Um, yeah. But Dominator has already begun coding the 500, so... It'll be close. If Dominator can solve, he'll probably win. Otherwise, depending on whether Scotch Tape can solve the 400, he'll win. But the match is very close, which is interesting, considering the giant rating difference. Well, so the thing here is there aren't really that many substrings. I don't know why you're printing the answer under mod. That's very unusual, I'd say. Um, and th there also aren't that many ways of doing it, I imagine, right? Because you just want to, you're interested in how many prefixes and suffixes are identical, or like have, have identical characters. Right. So it does seem like it's largely a product of two numbers mod x. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know. My my money is on... Who's working on 500? Is that Dominator? Dominator. My yeah. money's on Dominator. Oh. Yeah, he solved it. All right, there you go. <laughs> well done, Dominator. Interesting strategies, but it paid off for him, I guess. Yeah, now we have uh, Dominator versus... Uh... JJ, which is also not very close. Let's see, are there any like close matches right now? Yeah, it looks like there's this match between Wabba Dab, Kalakabu, and uh, Hasler, which is pretty close in terms of rating. <laughs> Wabba Dabba, okay. Um, yeah, can you guys ping me in that? The Wabba Dabba one? 
I actually don't think they're uh, playing right now. I think they're just getting ready. Actually, I believe there's actually only... Wait, no, never mind. I see They the are problems. playing. Yeah, it looks like Okay. it, it was started 13 minutes ago or something. Uh, but no solves yet. That's interesting. Thank you, thank you. Um, huh. So I wonder if they're working on this 500. The cat fur your transform. Oh, man. The puns. The puns. yeah so it looks like um, Wabba Dabba is looking at the 500 right now and he's running on samples so we'll see when he solves that Interesting. Yeah, so I haven't solved this one before. Let's take a look. So it's popular, blah, blah, blah. A perfect long cat is a cat with a number equal to 2 to the m minus 1 for some. So it's like 1 less than a power of that base. Oh, I guess, but it can be for any base. So this is base. Oh, no, 2 to the m. So Oh, it's this, just yeah, base it's two, base yeah. 2, base 2. So there are two different operations you can do. Select an integer n and replace it with So you you have to alternate the operations. And one operation is just like flipping a suffix of bits or like some like some of the lowest set bits or Mm-hmm. some of the lowest bits. And the second operation is just increasing the number by one. Okay. And it's interesting that you have to alternate the operations. It doesn't let you perform multiple in a row. And what do you have to do? Reach some total? You have to reach some number that is a power of two minus one. Oh, So, by doing this sort of thing. yeah. Interesting. What's what's interesting is that And you also have to reconstruct how to do it, how to do the answer. yes, yeah. So this is a diff two B, so I doubt this is intended, but you can just run a BFS and then that requires very little thought because constraints are pretty low. Although it does But go up to two to the thirty, right? Or but is I is don't think you're ever going to construct a number very big. It never seems optimal to like to do the operation like A with a big N or with an N that's bigger than like log base two of X. So because of that, the numbers will never get big. So running a BFS should just work. However, because this is there's so little time and because you also have to reconstruct the answer, it would probably take a while to code. Yeah, it might not even be worth it, even if you have that solution. Right. But, So the real question um, is, is there a greedy that just works otherwise? yeah, I Yeah. think so. You can just flip all of the, uh, in operation A, flip all of the um, zeros at the end of the number. And so when you're at operation B, the like suffix of that number is going to be all ones. And so that'll flip all of the ones to like a bunch of zeros, but with like a larger one. And then if you keep doing that, you'll eventually have a string with all ones, which is what you want. Right. So you kind of keep like increasing the length of the the run with the same number of characters at the end of the number, because like the plus operation flips a bunch of ones at the end and the other operation flips a bunch of zeros at the end. And then at the end, you can just use like the B operation to change it from a power of two to like a power of two minus one. So if you start with something that's like something like this, are you are you allowed to start with either operation or do you have to start with the range flip? Um, you Or must I guess start with the range flip. yeah okay or suffix flip. All right. So initially you have just a bunch of those, yeah, and then you change them to just a one with a bunch of zeros, and then you you do range flip again, yeah.
So it's, huh, so, it, oh yeah, it would be, it'd be faster to code certainly if you didn't have to reconstruct it, but it looks like it's something like the number of times that it changes from, mm, yeah, I guess it's not too bad to implement. So you just like find the longest suffix of continuous things and then. Yeah. But what if the suffix of continuous things is a bunch of ones and you have to start um... with a range flip? When you're in operation A, you can. Hmm. That's a little annoying, isn't it? Because you don't want to end with a zero when you have to increment. You can, you can, if you just set n equals zero, it basically skips the operation in operation A. So it's not a big deal. Oh, so you can choose not to do operation A. I yeah, see. Okay. pretty much. Because, yeah, n equals zero just does nothing. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. And you, you always, do you have to do it in the fewest number of operations or can you do any? No, any, okay. no, any, any number. All right. Um, but Wabba Dabba was on this problem, but he doesn't look to be solving it anymore. He got wrong answer test four and then moved on to a different one. Well, hang so, on. So the round is 20 minutes, right? And it started at 1140. So does it end in one minute with potentially no oh. scores? Yeah. I guess so. so that might weird, be... though. I did not expect that at all. Yeah. They Maybe somebody's just, just going to try the 100 in the last minute. Right. Yeah, any any solve here. Oh, and it, I think that any second now it'll end. Oh. Yes, yeah, um, so I mean, if there are no solves, then um, we just have neither advance. I... I just saw in another channel, it looks like Wabba Dabba is not actually a pre-college participant. So I think he's been DQ'd from the bracket, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, Wabba Dabba. Wabba Dabba. Come on, Wabba Dabba. Oh, my hopes yeah. were so excited for this. Darn. All right. But the round should be ending soon anyway. Did he not know this was high school only? I'm not sure. We do have a, another bracket for non-high school members, but maybe he just didn't realize that. Darn. Unfortunate. Um. All right, can we take a look at this Dominator versus JJ match? Can you guys ping me in that one? That looks kind of fun, kind of entertaining. All right, the participants are in upper zero and lower zero. All right, here we go. looks like, oh, it just started. So we're set. Okay. So we've got some slightly harder problems this time. 1,000 to 1,400. And I guess let's take a look at what they're doing. All right. So we've got Dominator and JJ. Let's take a look at JJ. So JJ is doing number of pairs, 1538C, I think. Dominator is actually working on that problem as well. So this might be an opportunity to snipe. That should be should be fun. JJ is already typing, so he's he's deep into the code yeah. already. And so is Dominator. So it sh it'll be close. So this is a div 3C. And after reading the problem, it looks like it'll probably just be an implementation exercise for both of them. But we can go over the problem. So um, in this problem, there's an array of length n. And, uh, and there's two numbers given, l and r. And you have to count the number of pairs of indices where the sum of the, 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 sum of the two arrays and the, the sum of the two array elements at those indices is between l and r. 
You need to count the number of pairs of indices where the sum of the array elements is in that range. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it sounds like a classic prefix sum and then range sum on that. Well, um, it's it's not the sum of the array elements between the two indices. It's just the sum of the two indices. Oh wait. So right. so the sum of the array elements is between the. It's just the sum of a i plus a j if your pair is i j. Ah, okay, all right. So it's not a range sum even. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, it's a little bit simpler. If it's kind of reminiscent of the two sum problem, mm -hmm. the idea is to just iterate over one element and then you can find the possible range of values for the other one and just do some binary searches on the array to figure out how many. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see who can finish this first. Dominator is submitting. So we'll see if he gets AC. JJ has quite a bit left. Quite a bit of code left, it looks like. Um, Dominator got accepted. All right, let's see if JJ notices how much time he's going to waste. So JJ just got sniped here, which means that he's at a huge disadvantage because he has no progress on any of the other problems. And it looks yeah. like he's actually going to have less time than Dominator on whichever one he starts now because he doesn't he doesn't know. Mm -hmm. And Dominator is currently working on the 500. So if he wins this, that's the match. Is this one the 300 or the 400? Um, That one? Wait, the one they just solved was yeah. the 400, I believe. Yeah, it was a 400. So now... Interesting. So Dominator has already started coding the 500. Let's take a look at what it is then. Polycarp is an organizer of a regional. There are N universities numbered 1 to N, and Polycarp knows the competitive programmers in every region. There are also N students, and the I student is at some university with some programming skill. Um, the members of the team. So he chooses a team of some integer size K, then every university will send their K strongest students. And the next K strongest students in the second team. Oh, okay, yeah. So they bucket them by K when they're sorted. The strength of the region is equal to the total scale members of all present teams. The total scale of the members of all present teams. Okay. Find a strength of the region of each choice of K from 1 to N. Um, yeah, so in this, it seems as though you can pretty much just brute force it because, um, yeah, so because after you group the students by what university, what university they're enrolled at, you can just iterate over the values for each K because, because like it, using the observation that the sum of like the harmonic series is log of n. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. just brute forcing and then storing prefix sums for each university should be good enough. And you just like the part that you add up is just the remainder of the students that don't go. So you add yeah. up how many students don't don't go on the team for every university. Is it possible there are a whole bunch of universities? Yes, there are um, n universities. But because the sum of the number of students across all universities is n, it's still fast. You do have to be a little careful to break out early. Like if you're ever at a university with too few students, you need to be able to break out of the rest of the universities. Mm -hmm. But it shouldn't be too difficult. Um, yeah. All right, and it looks like JJ is on a different problem, which is interesting. Maybe he's trying to call dominator's bluff here but it looks like this this would be pretty easy for dominator to win yeah he is coding and his solution looks pretty i think it looks good so we'll see 
let me uh, let me take a look at yes. So yeah, he's he's testing on samples. See, he's Seems in like lower he has one? a correct solution. Uh, he's in lower zero. Lower zero. Okay. He did get wrong answer on the sample. Might be a bug, but yeah. So in terms of match strategy, if he solves this, he wins the match. So is so JJ is going to. So is JJ's strategy to get other points, hoping that like Dominator is going for that problem instead, or That's hoping so that Dominator that. can't solve. So what far, that you? gambit seems to be paying off. If Dominator isn't able to fix his bug, mm -hmm. Dominator does have eleven minutes left, though, right? He's got eleven minutes to fix this. Um, yeah. But of course, so JJ doesn't know that Dominator is working on D, and Dominator doesn't know that he sniped JJ. He might be thinking it's probably true now. But at the time when he went for the the 500, maybe JJ thought that Dominator would think JJ was working in the 500, so Dominator would go for like the three and then maybe a one or something. Um, so JJ maybe, also maybe... put in the chat that he was sniped, which might be not a good idea match strategy wise. But... <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't leak that information. But all right, so what is Dominator doing here? He is he using an online editor? Yeah, he's using the Code Chef IDE, which is funny. I've it's like custom invocation, but for Code Chef. Yeah, I've never seen someone do that before. I mean, someone serious do it. Is this what he does on a day to day basis? Is this like his normal editor? That's interesting. All right, there are a couple of interesting matchups happening in parallel. One of them is between Jatlo and One um, in the loser's bracket, but they're only like 20 rating away from each other, which is kind of interesting. Do you want to take a look at that and maybe give us an update if something fun happens there? Yeah, sure. So it looks like Dominator is doing some prefix st some stuff here. What's interesting is that after running it for the first time, he actually deleted a large portion of his code. So he might have actually misread, um, which he he is typing again. But if he is spending, one issue that like happens a lot in lockout contests is because you're so focused on solving problems so quickly, a lot less focus is given on reading the problem statement properly. So this does happen. And if he did, if he read, reads it correctly now, he should still be fine. But it's also possible he still misread it, and that could be very harmful for him and his chances, yeah. especially with yeah. such a uh, such a short mash. Misreading twice in a row would be a killer. Mm -hmm. Quick update on the Jatlo one match. <laughs> it barely started, and Jatlo already solved the three hundred. So, might be a difficult game. Looks like Dominator just got C. So Dominator wins. I guess he's going after another problem. But it should be um, over, right? Yeah, it is over. All right. GG. Well done, Dominator. OK, should we move over to the chat low game now? Yeah, let's take a look at it. Can you ping me in it, too? Sure. So 
we got. Thank you, thank you. All right, the 300 just got solved. So Jetlow is looking at the 500 right now. Is Jetlow versus one? Uh, yes. Very close in rating. Okay. Jetlow's on the 500. I guess let's take a look at the the problem then. Intense heat. The heat intensity value is the maximum of average temperatures over all segments of at least k consecutive days. So it looks like this problem, you can just brute force it by just iterating over all ranges of size at least k and then just finding the average temperature with prefix sums. Yeah, that, so. that makes a lot of sense. And for a div 3c, that sounds about right. Yeah. What's interesting is I think the problem can still be solved when n is larger, which is probably a more interesting problem. Um, but yeah, it's harder for a div 2c and for the, or a div 3c and for this mm -hmm. lockout. Uh, that might be a really quick match though. Did, yeah. did, is Jatlow the one working on it? Um, Jatlo is, yes. I'm not sure what one is working on. Really interesting right now. Um, there's this match between Adam GS and Dewey. Dewey's like 1400 rated and Adam GS is a grandmaster, but at the moment Dewey seems to be winning. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, I guess let's go take a look at that one. This one might be, might be wrapped up unless Jatlo gets upset on intense heat, but it seems like it's a very simple problem, so... Unless he misreads it, it seems unlikely to happen. Uh, here we go. Awesome, fantastic. So this is Dewey versus Adam DS. Yeah. Yeah, Grandmaster versus. Uh, yeah, so K. Adam is looking at the five hundred, and but it's quite a long statement. So why? Oh boy. Do you speak to another problem right now? And accept it. Okay. Which one was that? Okay, so Dewey has the 300 and the 100. Right, so Dewey is going for the 400 now? Dewey has both of them now. Do we just got the 100? Yeah. Oh boy. Well, this could be an upset. Yeah, so Dewey needs just either of them, either the 4 or the 500, and 200 is now completely worthless. There's no reason to ever solve it. Yeah, and he is going for the 400. And and Dewey's on 500. So if at or sorry, uh, Adam's on 500. So if Dewey gets 400, this differential sorting problem then he wins. Yes. All right, let's take a look. So you can perform the following operation no more than n times. You pick three integers and replace the first one with the difference between the next two. And you want to sort the array. So if a y is less than, or if the second last element is less than or equal to the last element, then you can just set all of the first n minus two elements to be the same value. And you, that need, would immediately... and you need to say whether it's possible? Yes, and construct it. And you don't have to minimize the number of operations? No. 
Yeah, so if you ever have an increase among the last two elements, then you're like if the last two elements are increasing, then you're done, right? Yeah. And if the last two elements are the same, you're also done because you can yeah. just set them all to zero. Oh, but the the array can have negative elements in it though. Yeah, it can. Um, so if the last element is less than zero, it's impossible. And right, yeah. If the last element is less than zero, it'll never be possible because you can't ever. Yeah. Um, is that true? I don't think that's if, true. You could have like negative one and negative ten, right? So you could have negative. You could have zero, negative ten, negative one, and you can make that. Oh, I guess no. Never mind. Assuming your array is sorted initially. So, because you need you need the second last element to be less than the last element. Because if the second last element is greater than the last element, you can't you ever can't do, do anything. anything. About it. Yeah. And because of that. Like you need both of them on, um, you need both of them to be positive because yeah. And then I think after that, you can just set the first n minus two elements to be the difference between the last two. Do you need both of them to be positive? Or no, you just need the, just the last, last one. one to be. Yeah. Just the last one. And then you just set every operation to, you do the same thing to every, everything that's not the last two. Mm -hmm. You set them all the same number. It's solvable. 1700 yeah. can get it. Yeah, it's. I think there's a, quite a bit of luck involved in this one since the construction is simple, but you have to find all the conditions. And like once you see the solution, I think it's pretty easy to understand. But yeah, for we'll sure. see. It's also very easy to miss a case. Yeah. There are a lot of corner cases. Like, for example, like even if the last element is negative, you could already have a non-decreasing array. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, there's a lot of corner cases to work around. And he is getting wrong answer on the sample, but he did submit something. So one take of, a look at what he said. One of the samples does have that case where, where the last element's negative, but it's already sorted. Um, quick update on the Jatlow versus one round. It seems to be getting a bit more interesting because one ended up solving the 500. So now Really? Oh, that's fun. Okay, should we... Well, I kind of want to keep watching this, but after this one finishes, we'll, we'll jump right back to that. So Dewey has realized that it's just setting the first n minus two elements to, um, to like the... Yeah, just doing the operation for first n minus two elements. He does have that in his code, but he is missing some cases, and his cases don't seem perfectly correct. Can I one see a screen? To... What what screen or what room is he in? Um, he's in upper one. Okay. Sorry, what were you saying? So his construction is right. He's just not handling the cases correctly, um, right now. So. Um, but actually, I think his current code is correct, if I'm not mistaken. So if he's like, once he submits this, it looks like he do like, he just submitted. Yeah. Or oh, but he got it wrong on samples. Um, he's submitting right now. Okay, just submitted. We'll see. It looks correct to me. Um. Oh, oh wrong on samples. Wrong, wrong on samples. Uh, he might, uh, might be off by one. He's not adding one to the indices. Yeah. So it yeah. should be n minus one and n, yeah. Yeah. But that's a really easy fix. Yeah. And other than that, I think it's right. His conditions seem equivalent. Yeah. His first, the first thing he wrote is equivalent to um, our, uh, the last element being positive. And then he also checks with the uh -oh. second. But wrong test that. two. That's brutal. Ooh. Yeah. I wonder right. why that is. It looked like Adam GS moved to the 400 as well, so might be interesting. Yeah, he's reading right now. But if Dewey's able to pull this off, it will only be the second upset or a second major upset of this um, bracket so far. Uh, the first one being when um, the third seed actually lost to um, one bit and. Um, 
Uh, it looks like the match between Hasler and One Bit just finished, and Hasler won. So, yeah. So I looked at Dewey's code, and I think the bug is him not him not doing equality correctly. Um, he checks if the third lap, if the second last element is strictly less than the last element, but he needs to check that it's less than or equal to. So uh, that's definitely yeah, a that would bug do it. that is possible to catch. I think for him, he should just like stare at his code and he, he'll notice it. But we'll see what his debugging strategy looks like. Oh, now he's trying to type def <laughs> long, long. Oh, no. <laughs> um. All right. Oh, he did oh, change. he found it. He, he just he found, it. found it. He did find it. Is he submitting? He's he's freaking out. He's going. His mouse is moving 100 miles an hour. <laughs> he's on overdrive here. It looks like he's got it. Let's see. Pass test case two. There you is go. He... Well done, Dewey. Wow. Well done. Well done. Oh my goodness. Wow, what a match. Congrats. That's impressive. Hmm. All right, I guess let's jump back to the other one. Was this uh, the Amethyst one? Uh, it was Jatlow versus or one. Jatlow right? versus yeah, one. That's yeah, that's the yeah. one. Yeah, it's the Amethyst one. Um, so it looks like they're still in progress with just the three hundred and the five hundred solved. So one got the five hundred, and it looks like we're almost out of time here, right? When did this start? Two oh six. So we've got less than a minute left, which means. One Why wins, one? unless Jetlo pulls something out of his hat. He needs at least the, well, he needs the 400, right? 200 is just not enough. Not enough points. Do you know if the Dominator versus Hasler has started yet? I'll check that right now. Yeah, it just started like yeah, right now. Just, yeah. Let's go switch to that. It looks like this one's pretty much wrapped up. Okay. So first 30 minute match. And we have a bit harder problems too here. We've got 1,000 to 1,800 with the. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this one, this one's I've solved, but this is a div 1b from somewhat recently. Looks a bit tricky. So you give it an array. So what, what is going on here? I don't quite uh, understand this range and partition. Uh, yeah, so you have to split the array into k subarrays. And, um, and you want to make sure that, so like the, the condition is kind of like weird, but like in um, like for a fixed x and y, you want to, um, you want to like make sure that the number of elements inside the range x and y is more than the number outside the range x and y in each subarray, and you have to find x and y so that this is true. 
So you have to both find x and y and a way to split the array into k subarrays. Is the array initially sorted? Or if it's not, do we just it's say it's not, impossible? It's well, it's... Wait, you don't, the array doesn't need to be sorted. Um, it's like... Yeah, so it's like after... Like, you have to find a way to split the array. And then after you split it, you have to find a way... Like, find a pair of numbers, x and y, such that within each range, after you split the array, the number of elements... Um, that's greater than or equal to x and less than or equal to y is strictly is strictly more than the number of ranges number of elements less than x or greater than y why not just pick a really big range of x and y oh you, uh, you, you want have to minimize, minimize that? y minus x yeah uh, okay wow that's a lot there's a lot of a lot of moving pieces here yeah um yeah i think that's like one of the in, in lockout at least this is i think this problem even if it's not like difficult which i don't remember if it is but even if it's not difficult just on internalizing the statement and internalizing the process will take time so yeah for sure. it's it's not it might not be a great choice to go for in the lockout format but then again, this is also 30 minute round, so they do have more time. I have solved this problem before, <laughs> but honestly, yeah, I, I don't, I don't even remember doing it. I guess I solved it a long time ago, back when I was, back when I was yellow. I, yeah. Um, I think. I think the idea is that you do a two pointers on X and Y. And then um, when you do that, like you, um, you, you just have to find out if there's a way to split it into K places. And for that, you need at least K more elements that are inside the range X and Y than outside. So if you fix um, some K, like if you fix X and Y, then the problem's like you have zeros and ones, and you want to split it, split the array into k ranges such that there's strictly more ones than zeros in each in each subrange. And then for that condition, you I think the only condition that's necessary is that there are at least k more elements, there are at least k more ones than zeros. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. All, all you need is the the count of ones and zeros, right? Where they are doesn't matter. Yeah. 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 So then you just do two pointers, and then yeah. Um, and then there's also like a little bit more implementation because you have to construct the answer. Oh, you do. Um, oh, that's that's very annoying. Yeah. Yeah, this might be so, like a thirty-minute problem on its own, to be honest. Yeah. Okay, let's take a pause with that. Um. Yeah. Can we watch watch screens for anybody here? Do we know what? Yeah, so Dominator is working on the 200, and he's been submitting a lot, and he's been getting a lot of wrong answer on test ones. So. I guess let's take a look uh, at the 200, maybe. Yeah. Div2C sounds sounds approachable. Cowboy Vlad has a birthday. There are N children who came to the celebration, and in order to meet, in order to greet Vlad, the children decided to form a circle around him. Among the children who came, they are both tall and low, and they stand in the circle, circle arbitrarily. Um, there might be a tall circle, a tall child standing next to the the low child, and it'd be difficult for them to hold hands. Therefore, the children want to stand in a circle that so that the maximum difference is minimal. Um, formally, let's number the children from one to n, so that every ith child number i will stand next to a child number i plus one, and then you have to print a way of doing it. Um, yeah, it sounds like a greedy approach to this should work pretty well, right? Mm -hmm. Like you just take the smallest and then put the next smallest on his right, then in the left, and then right and left, and so on. Um, yeah, but if you if you just sort it, then like because it's like circular, the last element and the first element have a really big difference. Yeah, so not don't exactly sort it, but like you start with it sorted, and then you kind of like alternate whether you're at the beginning of the array or the end of the array if that makes sense oh yeah 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 um, yeah you like 
yeah, so you have all the even ones, all like the elements at even indices after sorting, and then like all of the odd indices but reversed, and then you like interleave them. Yeah, I think something like that, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so Dominator, did he solve that? He seems to be reading a different problem. Let's check. All right, I'll be right back. Oh, after getting a lot of wrong answer test ones, he just skipped. He never got AC on the problem, which is interesting. And his solution does look about right. Um, I think he's he just has some like details messed up, like maybe off by ones or just parity issues. But yeah, um, him deciding to leave the problem is an interesting strategy. All right, what I miss? Anything uh, of interest? Um, Dominator still crushing it. Yeah, he 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 stopped solving the two hundred. Okay. He, after getting wrong answer test ones. Um, but yeah, I don't think anyone has solved anything, but we'll see. Know, the 200 feels so approachable to me. Yeah, and his solution looked pretty close. Um, he has the he has like the same idea, of like interleaving it after reversing like the odd indices or the even indices. But I think he has like some parity issues or like off by ones or something like that. Just like, um, like a small mistake, and because of that, he's getting wrong answer. Do you know what his handle is? Um, dominator, dominator 16 yeah. it's dominator with an e instead of like an o and then zero six nine i can uh, send okay. it in chat. Uh, it's actually if you go to the lockout bot on um, where the problems are you the handle is actually linked like their profile gotcha okay why is oh two so the first array is like the initial and then the final one So right now, I think he's working on the 300. Um, and I believe Hasler is working on the 400. So it'll be interesting to see who solves it first. Because um, remember, these problems aren't like, they, they aren't like that easy anymore. You could easily like, spend a lot of time on any given problem so um time may maybe become a bigger concern but um yeah we'll see i think lockout contests where it takes more than like five or ten minutes to solve a problem are definitely more interesting but i also think they're slightly less fun to watch because obviously people have very short attention spans so it's always very a very interesting trade-off. Um, quick update. So after Dewey beat Adam, um, he went against Amoeba, and then he lost that match. So oh, Dewey. The next. Darn. Poor Dewey. Oh, wait. Was... So has Dominator submitted to C? 
to the 200 or the uh, it looks like 300 sorry 300 it looks like dominator's last submission was to the 300 that he was getting wrong uh, okay. answer test case one on oh wait it says birthday but why is he doing yeah he after he she never actually solved the 200 after getting like five wrong answer test ones, he switched problems. But his last submission looks like it's actually for for a different problem, doesn't it? Why is he making a two by n ar array? Yeah, so now he's working on the three hundred. I think. Oh, okay. Uh, I think his last submission was a mistake. I think that, right? No, no, wait. So he's he's he skipped the two hundred, like he gave up on the two hundred, and now he's working on the three hundred. The 200 was birthday, which is the one we discussed earlier. And he's working on a different problem now. So right now he's submitting to the 300. Oh, okay. All right. Um, and yeah, he, he gave up on the 200, even though he was close. I was just misreading his code. I thought his, he was making a, a 2D grid for the 200 that was 2 by n which is part of what the 300 statement is, but I was just misreading it. He was actually intending to do it. I was just wrong. But yeah, he's getting wrong answer test one, but it's because of an out of bounds error, according to Code Forces Diagnostics. So we'll see if he notices that. So it looks like there are 13 minutes left and currently no solves. And this entire time, Hasler has been working on Secret Santa. Yeah, looks like that. So it looks like he's swapped X and Y, but I'm not sure. Yeah, so that was the issue, it seems. He swapped his um, two array dimensions. So he's fixing that now, Let's see if he gets AC. So for problem D, it looks like you have a graph where every node has out degree one, and you want to turn it into a bunch of cycles and maintain as many edges as possible. I remember this problem. Um, yeah, this is from the tourist round. I remember, I remember solving it. I think the idea is not too bad. I think figuring out details is also quite annoying in this problem, as it, as is true with most functional graph problems. Um, but yeah, like again with lockout, I don't know if this is the right problem to go for because it's kind of hard to think about. But is it too tricky? It seems like, and what are the what are the tricky parts of the details? So anytime you have multiple incoming edges to a node, you need to get rid of one of them, right? Uh, or get rid of all but one. And then the one that you get rid of, you need to just assign it to something that currently doesn't yet have any in degree. Um, yes. Yeah, I think that's true. But I think there are a little, there are more details. Not, I don't, I'm trying to remember um, exactly. Oh, I guess you can't give it to yourself. Yeah. That might and, be the, the tricky part. And like after doing that, you have like a collection of like pads and then you kind of, you have to like link the pads in a cycle, which is also kind of annoying to deal with just implementation wise. Mm. Um, Like in general, I think they're just some details to keep track of. And like, there is like, yeah. 
But if I remember correctly, there's also, you can also do something, there's a randomized solution, which might be a lot easier to do on. Um, oh, just like keep yeah. randomly assigning, like anytime you have multiple in degrees, assign it to a random person with no in degree and just keep trying this until you're done. And on average, it'll take yeah. two tries. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And like, it'll, it's only f because the number of derangements is a lot, is very big. Like it should work on average. Um, because your goal is to like the only case where this would fail is where you are forced to link a node with itself, but mm -hmm. that generally doesn't happen. So how many derangements are there relative to the number of permutations? I think it converges to a const. I think it's, it converges to a constant. I think it's like a constant factor. Yeah. I think it's like one over E or something like that. Yeah. 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 Really? Yeah, and like I guess the way you would derive that is, um, um, you can calculate the number of derangements using a pi argument. Um, basically, the argument is you um, fix like a, one fixed point, and then you count the number of ways to do the rest. Then you fix another one, and you count the number of ways to do the rest, and then you keep doing that, and then um. So eventually you'll get something like n factorial times um, 1 minus 1 over 1 factorial plus 1 over 2 factorial dot dot dot. And the the thing that you'll get is essentially n factorial times the Taylor expansion of e to the negative 1. So it's it's a very nice, like, I guess, um, thing to know. But, but yeah. So it should only take a couple of tries on average until this works. So... I guess implementing that's a lot less, it has a lot less details and it's a lot easier. So but Dominator did get accepted on the 200. So we went back to the Okay, all right, all right, makes sense. So Dominator is in the lead. Oh, he solved both the 200 and the 300. Oh, nice. So right now he's looking at 1772C, which... That's probably the 100, right? 100 seems to be the yeah. smartest move for him. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's no way in seven minutes... Um, he's solving both the 400 and the 500. Yeah. And he also knows that... Well, he's probably he probably doesn't have enough time to solve either. Maybe maybe he has enough time to solve one. But there's no way um, his opponent, Arsako, has been... Or wait, no. There's no, there's no way Hasler has been working on one this whole time. Because he would have gotten it. If he was working yeah. on 100 this whole time. So this is a very smart move, I'd say. Yeah. Um, if he solves the 100, he pretty much wins the match. Yeah, it's so, almost guaranteed. Yeah. And otherwise, then, Has then Hasler would have to spend time working on the 100 for him to beat him at it. And then if that happens, like there's no way Hasler would also have time to solve yeah. the 500. So basically, he has if he, he has seven minutes to solve this problem or just get lucky and then yeah. he wins. Yeah, Hazard's been going for the 500, so um, he might end up solving that one. But it's likely that Dominator will end up solving the 100, so that'll steal the win anyway. Yeah, so now that this match is somewhat decided, uh, there's actually another match. Uh, this one's in the lower bracket between Adam GS and NK, and it's a really high-rated matchup between uh, a GM and a 2200, I think. So I guess we can look at that one. Can you ping me in the in the chat? Oh, uh, yeah. All right, fantastic. Looks like this started five minutes ago with some easier problems. But Adam just just solved the five hundred. Oh. Nice. Okay. So, what is his opponent working on? Back to the Dominator Hasler match. Um, it seems like Hasler sniped the one hundred. So now it's somewhat interesting. So hmm. now they're going. Up, they're both after the five. Yeah. Well, I guess Dominator also has the cho uh, the choice to do the 400, but Hasler has to do the 500. Right. Interesting. 
And Hasler has looked at the 500 before, right? Seems like it, yeah. That is a really big brain move for him to be aware of, like, what Dominator's strategy would have to be and then snipe it. Mm -hmm. He has five minutes to finish solving the 500, so that's actually pretty close. Oh, and this is the range of values one that we that we talked about earlier. Yeah. Yeah. What what room is he in? Can we watch his screen? Uh Let's look yeah, on down lower to the wire. Lower two. Okay. Oh, he's doing it in Russian. But he doesn't seem to be typing, so he might have given up. Yeah, it looks like he doesn't have a solution, so he's kind of just waiting for the match to end. Mm. Yeah, it's a tough problem. Okay, all right. <laughs> Let's go back to uh, the other round that we had. Um, Adam beat NK, so that's done. Oh, already? Yeah, there is... Um, well done, Adam. There's Amoeba versus Arsico, which is a longer match as well. Well, look at that. So wait, is Do has Dewey lost? To I8D? Dewey's kind of a fan favorite, so I might want to take a look at that. Yeah, let's, let's look at that lunch. Um, oh, it started two minutes ago. Okay. Let's that. All right. Fantastic. All right, all right. We got a short round two here. The fan favorite, Dewey. Oh, those palindromes. Yeah, so it looks like it's another tough match for Dewey. Um, IAD is quite high rated too. Got the 1300. Yeah, it would be it would be very cool to see Dewey win this one. <laughs> you can see Dewey's cursor is just like insane. <laughs> just solve the 500 right now. He's trying to. He just solved it. He just got it. What uh oh my goodness, wow. Dewey. Dewey is making the decimal system proud. What what room is he in? Um he's upper in upper one. one. What is he doing now? Is he going after the one oh he just opened everything. Okay. The 200. So he's going for a 700 point total. That's interesting. Oh, maybe the 400 instead. Maybe he's thinking. Uh oh. Rip Dewey. <laughs> Okay, looks like he's got him now. Oh, oh, okay, all right. So, IAD is looking at the 300 right now. Um, and he did submit, but he's getting wrong answer test one. This one looks very doable. The one Dewey's working on. I guess that's the 400, right?
So apparently Dewey didn't like it. I don't know. Build the permutation looks looks like it's it's very approachable, right? The difference between them needs to be at most one. Yeah. And then the, the bigger one is the first that happens. Um, uh, does the bigger one need to be the first? Yeah, it's got to be the first and the last because they're going to alternate from maximum to minimum, maximum, minimum. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And then if that's true, I think every permutation is possible, right? Uh, as long as they're not too big, yeah, as long as the sum of those two yeah. is small enough. Yeah, and then the construction, you can just put all of the ones, like, you can set aside A things that are at the bottom and B things that are at the top, or, no, A things that are at the top and B things that are at the bottom, and then you can just throw all of the things that are in the middle, like, at the start or something like that, and then you could probably just do that, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, like, what I would do is just start at zero and use positive and negatives, and then at the very end, add the minimum to everything. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. So, like, have a counter for your maximum and your minimum and just go to positive one, negative one, positive two, negative two, uh, and, then, yeah. and then at the end, just compress, compress it. So, it looks like Dewey is working on the one that IAD was working on. Um, which is unfortunate for him. Uh, because IAD seems like he's almost done. But, do we'll we see, maybe he can type him. Do we just finish typing, though? He's going a million oh. miles an hour. Oh, I, IAD got accepted. Oh, uh, okay. Rip. But, on the bright side, he didn't waste that much time. Because he only started, like, a couple minutes ago. He's also read but D and knows he doesn't like it. Which is somewhat useful. Yeah. Um, but IAD is now reading the 400. That could be a real problem for Dewey. Right. Because if, if IAD solves the 400, then um, Dewey... Well, right now, if um, Dewey should probably go for the 200 and the 100. Because he's read the 400. He knows he doesn't like it. And he knows that IAD is probably going for the 400 because, like, he needs the points. So, um, it makes sense for Dewey to go for the 200 and then the 100. Um, because if Dewey gets the 200, he's, um, then, like, if Dewey gets the 200, then, um, then IAD would need to solve the 400 to win. The, the one he's looking at right now is still the 300, right? Uh, the string problem? Think. Yeah, so I guess he hasn't realized that. Yeah, he doesn't know that, that he can't get it anymore. <laughs> we've, got, <laughs> we've got tourist in the chat. <laughs> and it's, yeah, it's tourist problem. Good to see a tourist. Yeah. But yeah, this might be a good time to advertise CF Predictor for Dewey. Um, or not CF Predictor, CF Notifications. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So there's a there's a tool I built which will make an alarm go off when you or someone you're watching solves a problem. And that would be very helpful for this. All right, please check Hopefully. Discord, Dewey. Please check Discord. Please. You got a wrong answer test too. But please so check Discord. No, this is but this is for the problem that doesn't count, right? This one's already yeah. dead. So he's got to go. Oh no, Dewey! Oh no, Dewey! Dewey! Dewey, you're killing us! <laughs> Dewey! <laughs> oh no! Oh, Dewey, stop debugging. Situational situational awareness, Dewey. Please. All right, what's IAD doing? Is he um, is he making progress? He seems to be coding. He's coding the, the 400, yeah. And so far, his solution looks pretty close. So he might get this one. So do we need to switch the 200 quickly if he wants a chance? 
It looks like he definitely has not noticed and <laughs> doesn't seem to be planning to go. <laughs> Might be difficult. So Dewey needs both the 200 and the 100. <laughs> and he still hasn't noticed that he's on the 300, which is which is dead time. Oh, still getting wrong answer. Dewey, check Discord. Check Discord, Dewey. Obviously, he can't hear us. They're not allowed on the stream, but... Yes, please look. Please look. Yes, look, look, look. Okay, he sees it. He sees it. But he's going to the four. Oh, he's going to the 200. All right, he... It's good. Okay. Let's look at the 200 now. He's on the right chance. Okay, yeah, let's look at it if at first you don't succeed. He opened up 200, 100. So it looks like he's got the right strategy. He's got, he knows what he needs to do to win. All right. Yes. Let's read the 200. And first, you don't succeed. Bugs Donald was visited by A students, Beaver King by B, and uh, C visited both. And they're N in his group. So he wants to determine so this, if this is self-contradictory. This is just like Venn diagram. Yes, um, the classic. So Dewey has a good chance of getting this one quickly. And then at that point, IAD should probably go for the 100. It depends. Yeah, it depends how much time I has left. Um, oh right, because he should he do which, whichever one he can finish first. Yeah, because he's already probably invested a bunch of time into it. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like the problem the two hundred is just checking if like a plus b minus c is less than n or not. So shouldn't be. Yeah. So if he sees it, he should be able to get it. Mm -hmm. There's so much text in the statement that doesn't matter. So you just, you got to skip to the last sentence of the first paragraph. That's all that matters. Not so, even that, like just reading the output sections enough to understand the problem. Yeah, honestly, it's true. <laughs> so many people in the chat are cheering for Dewey. Dewey's, Dewey's our, our underdog here. That's why we're, we're cheering for him so hard. I actually have no idea who, who he or she is. All right, do you see it? Do you see it? There you go. Got the template. Reading them in. Uh, yeah, all right. Okay, well, uh, that's not quite right. <laughs> oh, okay, no, this cool. Is yeah, fine. yeah, that's fine, that's fine. fine. Yeah, he subtracted out the number that are in both. So, so it should be legit. Seems fine. So another thing with lockout um, is that in this case, a good strategy, um, instead of like running out samples, would be to just submit it, on, um, like submit it and then run it on samples. Because submitting it takes very little time, and there's no penalty for wrong submission. So after running on the first sample here, yeah, um, what do we did? Just submit it right now and let Code Forces run it on the rest of the samples for you. All right. Ooh, oh, wrong, wait, answer, wrong test answer. Two, but test two is a sample, so okay. It's just it needs to be less than or equal to zero. Less than or equal to zero. Yeah, he's, he's got it. Time. Man, the speed at which Dewey moves his cursor and selects things is like simultaneously giving me anxiety and making me so excited. <laughs> oh, wrong answer, wrong five. answer five. Is it overflow and overflow? Doesn't look like it. Wait a minute. They can't be negative, can they? They can't be negative. No, but he subtracts out C. So like if A is less than C, if A is Oh, less than C, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or greater than C or B is greater than C, then it's bad. I didn't even think of that case. Yeah, I didn't realize that either. Yeah. 
13. Um, oh, he had an equal sign, which he shouldn't have had. All right. Accepted. All right. Well done, Dewey. So that leaves it all down to the 100. And. Uh oh. Okay. Well, he's not allowed to check non sample test cases. Oopsies. <laughs> oh. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. What do we do about this? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Warning first. Yeah. And this okay. isn't really an isolated case either. In other people's streams we've watched, they have been also been checking uh, the samples. Okay. How about, can we do an announcement before the final 16, just to let people know? Yeah, I threw yeah. an out. Um, okay. So hopefully people saw that. All right. That's all right. He didn't know. Give Dewey the benefit of the doubt. Um, all right. So this leaves everything up to... Everything um, up to problem one, right? 100? Yeah. Odd so I think he's actually, he's actually written code. For problem one? Uh, no, for the, uh, like, for the build a permutation for the 400. Mm, okay. So he's getting wrong answer test one. But if he can debug this, then it'll be an interesting match. But if Dewey solves the 200, it's over. Uh, or the 100, you mean? Yeah, or the 100. 100, yeah. Let's, For let's ID see. to win, he, he has to win. He has to solve both the 100 and the 400. So yes. right now, he should switch to the 100. The grasshopper is looking at a numeric axis. Uh, did anyone read it? I guess we can go read it. Let's take a look at the problem. What? And he did switch to the 100. So if ID can solve both the 100 and the 400, he wins. But it'll be hard. There are only three men left. We got some top-level strats here. After this match, we should look at the semifinal that's happening between Amoeba 1 and Dominator. Yeah. That's, that just started. I was going to say, like, Amoeba and Arsico, their match just finished, um, and um, Amoeba won. So the upper bracket finals are determined. Oh, boy. All right. Wait, what? Grasshopper is very fond of positive integers, so for each integer i starting with one, the following holds. Exactly i minutes after he makes a jump with a distance of exactly i. So first by one, then by two, etc. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay. So you go right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, and so on. I'm gonna figure out whether that's positive or negative. And then the, the order of magnitude. It looks like Dewey's got something. 
does not pass samples. He's probably off by one or two in his his calculation here. How much time do we have left? Let's see. So there are three minutes left. And if, well, I guess Dewey pretty much wins here. This might be, this might be locked up for Dewey because um, I8D needs both. Yeah. And with so little time left, it's going to be hard. And yeah, Dewey has officially won. So well done, Dewey. Um, he has just taken down not only the uh, highest rated player, but also the, I believe, third highest rated player in the entire tournament. So very, very well done to him. Indeed, indeed. All right, that puts... Dewey versus Hasler is up next, and we know the the upper upper division finals here. Dominator versus Amoeba. Do we have a do we have a break before then? I know there was a lunch break. Yeah, there was a break, but I think teams that just wanted to play during the break, I think we just let them. Okay. Is Dominator versus Amoeba, are they going? Yeah, they started a few minutes ago. Okay. Um, can you share the, the discord thread? Yeah. Um, oh, it's about to start. Dewey fan club indeed. Yeah. Well done, Dewey. Didn't realize the organizer is 10 people. Looks like we're still trying to start this one. These are the upper division finals coming up in a minute here. Um, Yeah. Is it all right if I invite people to the Discord server? Is that allowed? Yeah, it should be fine. All right. Discord links in the chat. Okay, here we go. Upper Division Finals just started. Looks like it's a 30-minute round with the, the hard difficulty set. Uh, maybe we'll start with the 300. Seems to be the most influential. All right, weird sum. I've solved this one before. Okay. You have a table with lines numbered 1 to n and columns numbered 1 to m. Each cell has a color. They can be presented as an integer from 1 to 100,000. Let's denote the cell that lies in the intersection of this row and this column is RC, and we know what Manhattan distance means. The path can go through cells of any color. 
and you want to calculate the sum of Manhattan distances between each pair of cells of the same color. So a key observation for things uh, like this is that one of n or m is going to be small, right? So one of them is at most 300, like 350 or something. Um, so you can iterate through the smaller one. And then for each smaller one, you can iterate through all of the bigger ones. But you still have to find a way of being a little clever with this. So it's not it's not too hard, but um, if you have like a list of all of the colors in their accounts at every row, then you should be good. And then you can obviously uh, imagine rotating this grid over its diagonal if there are more columns than rows because it's completely symmetric, of course. Net rotating, reflecting. All right, let's see. So we've got dominator. Maybe we'll take a look at dominator here. Screen share is a little, little suboptimal. I don't know that we need 60 FPS, but one FPS would be great. Is anybody else able to see Dominator's screen? We can stop watching him, I guess, and check what the opponent is. All right, Dominator got the 200. Nice. Be nice to see what he goes after next. Hmm. Oh wait, is that it? Did it just end? No, it was a while ago. Okay, we're here. All right, let's get rid of this so I don't get confused. Um, okay. Where's Amoeba? Amoeba's on almost all divisors. Yeah, thank you. I can't hear you if you're in Zoom. Um, 
but maybe that's fine. Okay, so Amoeba's on D. I would love to know what Dominator's on, but I can't see a screen for whatever reason. Let's take a look at D though. You're given some integer X. Uh, you're given a list of almost all of its divisors. So almost all means all divisors except one and X are on the list. Oh, so basically it's a gigantic number and you're giving its, its factors. Oh, maybe not. Okay. You want to find the minimum possible integer X that can be the guess number or say the input data is contradictory and it's impossible to find such numbers. Um, okay. And Amoeba submitting. Yeah, it's definitely the LCM of all of them. That makes sense. Um, but it might also be contradictory too. It's not necessarily the LCM, right? If you look at the second sample, um, that one, um, the LCM would be two, but it's actually four. Ah, uh, so if all of them are powers of the same prime, then it's that <laughs> times, I guess, times the prime again. Uh, yeah. So if you're given like three and nine, for instance, then the answer would be 27. Yeah. Because you can't do, you can't multiply it by two. If you multiplied it by two, then there would be another factor somewhere. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Um, looks like Amoeba just gave up on that one then. And now he's moving to falling anvils instead. Is there an update in the standings at all? Why would he do that? That's an interesting decision. Oh, Dominator got A. Interesting. Okay. So, yeah. Oh, okay. That makes sense. So, Amoeba has, Amoeba was going after the 400. Got it wrong. And then if Dominator solves the 500, Dominator wins because that's 800 points. So, Dominator is almost certainly going after it. Uh, certainly, I would if I were him. Because otherwise, you have to solve the 300 and the 400 in order to force a win. So, it's a race to five. Although it is important to remember that these problems are like not like the easiest problems. So it is um, feasible for like the match to end where there are some problems that haven't been solved by the time the match ends. So, so yeah. Yeah, the 400 could be useful um, if the 500 winds up being just way too difficult. But we do have like 20, 20 some minutes left. Yeah, and the 500 looks really bad. Wait, for the 400, can't you just like sort the list and take the product of the minimum and the maximum? Or is there some other information that's given? Uh huh. Let me take a look. Uh, I think they don't give you all of the divisors that aren't 1 and n, right? Wait, it says all divisors except one and x. So I think. Okay, wait. Let me this problem again. Yeah, you're given everything but one and x. So. Oh. I would just sort the list. Take the smallest and the biggest. You said, or the LCM of the smallest and the biggest. Yeah. yeah something like that. Um. But. Oh, and then check if that works. You also have to do the check, of course. Yeah. Because it might be contradictory. Yeah. Yeah, no, because if it works, it would just be the product, right? Yeah. That seems to be correct then, yeah. Hmm. So it's that, but also it could be the power of a prime. So you have to watch out for that case. I guess I've solved it. We can check. Well, even if it's the power of a prime, I, I think it wouldn't matter because it would just give you all the divisor pairs anyway. Um, but like, let's say what they give you is like three and nine. So then it would be like three times nine, right? So then you get 27, which seems to work out. Oh, you multiply them together? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I had a very complicated solution to this. Massively complicated. Written in C++. I guess so. Yeah, I guess it is just the product of the first and the last thing in the list.
That's smart. <laughs> oh, wait. Hang on a minute. 500 just got solved. Who got it? Amoeba. To take the lead. Oh. That was scary. Yeah. What? This looked like a the, the math here looks really intimidating. Yeah. What does the 300 look like? Is that also not that hard? That's a huge, huge shift. Um, it's annoying. I think it would take a while to code. It's like, um, I think it's like square root stuff. It doesn't look difficult, but it's, it is a decent amount of code. Okay. I used some bit stuff, I guess. I guess you assume X and Y are independent. Ah, I guess, yeah, X and Y are independent. So then it's not really that bad. Right? Yeah, I guess so. Oh, it looks like Amiwa already submitted a few times for the 400. So, like, he's already got a bit of a head start there. And I still yeah. can't see Dominator's stream because it's got his <laughs> what he's working on. Earlier in the contest, he was, he was working on it. And... Yeah, I guess it's just... Not seeing the solution. Is it always true that it's the smallest times the biggest in the list? Yeah, because the biggest list, like, or the biggest thing in the list would be the answer divided by some divisor. So you would want to divide by the smallest divisor you could. That's a super clever solution. Amoeba is the ones, the one with dual monitors, right? So we can't see his other screen. Um, not sure actually. Wait, has anybody seen him coding? I haven't seen any of his code. I mean, I've seen him submit, but I think he just he's got another monitor. I think. Yes, I guess so. I looked at Dominator's submission history, and he hasn't made any submissions after the last accepted one. So, interesting. You know interesting. Like. Yeah. All right. He's submitting. Looks like he. I didn't get a chance to look at the code. Let's see if he makes it past. Ah, oh, wrong answer, test five. All right. So it looks, let's take a look at the submission here. Ah, oh, I'm getting Rick rolled. You guys are hilarious. Very funny. <laughs> um, okay. So this is smallest prime factor. So he finds the smallest prime factor of every element. And then... Oh, he is multiplying the first element and the last element. So it looks like his evaluation for whether it works is wrong. He needs to do some sort of GCD stuff because it might be inconsistent. Um, oh, but maybe that's right. So I guess the real question is, is it possible that something appears twice in the array? So he's checking whether every factor is there Oh, and, uh, and just the, the other state dominator has sniped amoeba for the 400. And so now... Ooh, that's whoever, brutal. Yeah, so now whoever solves the 300 wins. But amoeba noticed really fast, so it might be really close. So now it all comes down to the 300. Whoever can solve that will win this match and <clears throat> have a really big advantage in the finals too because in the finals if you're if you come from the upper bracket 
you get like essentially a spare life. So if you lose the first time, you still get another chance. And so whoever wins this will have a huge advantage going into the finals. As far as how you do this problem, the uh, the solution idea relies on how Manhattan distance works, which is it's the distance between two elements is the uh, x distance plus the y distance. And because of how that works, all of the different cells here, their x and y coordinates are independent. So you can process how much the x coordinates contribute to the sum and how much the y coordinates contribute to the sum, uh, and then go through each color, and then do some, some evaluation there. That's certainly one way of doing it. There's probably also some square root stuff that you could do as well. Um, and when you're processing one dimension, you can use some sort of, uh, oh boy. You can use some sort of um, like Fenwick tree or segment tree or something like that. Looks like data structures are supposed to be necessary here. Yeah, I would love to be able to see a screen. But if not, that's fine. I think the question isn't so much who's going to get it as will they get it by the time or in 14 minutes. I think it's possible to, to code in maybe seven or eight for someone of and my I level. Dominator has just solved it. Just so, solved it. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So Dominator moves on to the finals and Amiibo will have to try again in the lower bracket. So, yeah. Well done, Dominator. Well done. Well, so Amoeba is uh, um, secured his spot at like the top of the lower bracket. So whoever plays their way through is going to have to beat him before going to the final. So chances are like he might be able to come back. Looks like there are quite a few more more rounds in the lower bracket that haven't yet been decided. Yeah, I think because it was lunch break, a bunch of uh, people okay. didn't play their games. Gotcha, gotcha. But um, JJJ versus one is happening right now. You want to look at that? Sure, yeah. All right, looks like this one started 12 minutes ago. No solves yet. Um, the contestants are in upper or lower two and upper three. Okay. If you want to look at your screens. Yeah, and one screen doesn't seem to be working, so perhaps upper three would be better. So it looks like, hmm, which problem is this? Ah, all right. <laughs> Shout out here. JJ has uh, CF notifications going. You can see uh, <laughs> in two of his tabs on the left. So you want to make both arrays sorted in decreasing order and some number of moves. Looks like this is the 400. 
that JJ is working on. Mm, okay, so you have you have two arrays. You got to sort both of them. So, yeah, pretty pretty straightforward problem, I would say, because you know what index everything needs to be in, and you can do that by by sorting by the first index and then breaking ties by the second index, or sorting by the first value, the value in A, and breaking ties by the value in B. And then you got to verify that it is sorted. In B. Yeah, it's relatively straightforward implementation. JJ, getting the 400 would obviously be a great start. After that, the question is where do you go, right? Do you go for the three and the one or the five? Well, the five is from, um, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. The five isn't too difficult of a problem actually. So I feel like that would be a good strategy for this. Three some closure. We yeah. can take a look at it before they're, before they get here. So you have an array of length N and the sum is called three sum closed. If for all distinct indices, the sum of these three is an element of the array. Uh, when does this happen? When they're all zero? Um, oh, yes. Hmm. This seems like, in general, this would almost never happen. Yeah. Oh, right. Um... So the number of positive elements and the number of negative elements you can have are bounded and they're pretty small. Because like if you have three positives, then their sum is going to be positive. So then there's a problem because then you will never be able to have this work. And if there's three negatives, its sum is going to be less than all three. So that's also not going to work. Is this ever even possible with four elements that aren't all zero? I mean, obviously, any number of zeros is possible, but if you ever have four elements and one of them has a non-zero value, is that even possible? Um, oh, one of them has a non-zero value, I think. Or at right. least one of them. Do, well, you could do zero, 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 one. Yeah, but... Oh! Oh, if exactly one of them does. Yeah, so any set where exactly one has a non-zero value works. Or negative one, zero, zero, one also works. Yeah, or any value. Yeah, of yeah, course. but I think knowing that you can have at most three positives and three negatives, you can just brute force the rest of it. Yeah. Is that the only condition, though? Oh, you would brute force like the zeros, the positives, and negatives, and do some bit mask? Yeah, something like Check that. that works. Well, because the zeros are not like super relevant right because they're just gonna add with any element that's already there um and then so all you need to do is just check like pairs and triples if there's a zero or two zeros mm. yeah so definitely doable yeah for sure We'll still no solves. Looks like Jay is having some issue, or JJ is having some issue trying to construct the answer. Yeah, it looks like there's some implementation error.
Another thing to note right now is that the the match has been going on for what eighteen minutes, Mm so there's two minutes left, which is oh, and someone solved the problem, and so I guess that means they just win then, right? Because there's only one minute left. Ah, uh, yeah, almost certainly. I mean, there's just no way to, Yeah. there's no way to, to beat that. I mean, it's also the 500, so like, regardless of what happens, it's pretty much a loss. Yeah. Well, congratulations to one for uh, winning this. And um, I guess the next match would be between one and Adam GS, right? So, um, yeah. Sounds good. Do you want to take a take a quick break? Come back in a couple minutes. Yeah, sure. All right.
And we're back. Good morning. All right, yeah. I guess we'll do some quick Q&A here. Um, Shivam somebody. Ch uh, I'm not going to try the last name. Asks about chat GPT affecting code forces. It's a good question. I think if you've actually used chat GPT to try and do things like this, you'll realize that it kind of sucks at the moment. It's really bad. Um, the only downside I see though, is that it does make like, it's, it's a little tricky for things like diff three and diff four contests because it's possible to write problems that ChatGPT would solve. One of the things I've noticed in particular is like, if you're talking to people who just learned how to program and like you're trying to teach them how to program, obviously code forces, program contest, those are, that's a great way of doing it. But in order to do that, these people have to work on problems that are very trivial, right? Like is an element in an array, right? Write a for loop, see if the element's in the array. Like see if there's a duplicate in the array in n squared time, right? No hash maps, no data structures, like check if a string contains a substring or like do something like check if an array contains a subarray, something like that. Just really, really trivial problems. These are the kind of things that ChatGPT can actually solve, but it discourages people or it discourages authors from writing them because your problems, a problem that they, ChatGPT can solve is, is not an interesting problem. Um, and you'll have people complain that like, uh, my friend beat me and he just used ChatGPT, right? So I think it's it's slightly negative in that it, it encourages people to do that. And I also think, especially like, I think it's it's an extra bar in terms of learning how to program to a lot of people. Because all of a sudden we've introduced an easy way out for doing a lot of school assignments. And I think it's going to be, there's, you need a certain level of like self-motivation in order to be successful with ChatGPT around that you didn't before. Because before the easiest way of doing simple programming homework was just learning how to program. But now if all you have is simple homework and if your life is never going to get more difficult, right? Or if you're acting only in the immediate best interest, um, I think a lot of people will use ChatGPT to do homework and then not learn the skills that you need to by just doing a bunch of easy problems. And I think, yeah, when, when I learned like how to actual, actually program and stuff, I'm not claiming to be like the best programmer in the world or anything. I know Tourist was in the chat earlier. He, he can, he can claim to be that. Um, but I don't know. I think one thing that was very important to me learning how to get at least like kind of good, at least to blue, to purple was literally just doing hundreds of hacker rank problems. Like I needed to do a hundred problems so that certain things I didn't have to think in order to implement. Like the thinking was purely on problem solving. There was no thinking when it came to just implement something that I understand how to do. If I understand the algorithm, I can implement it a hundred percent of the time, no problems. Uh, and I think that's obviously like for the really, really good competitive programmers, that's not an issue, but probably for most of the people watching the stream here, that's not a huge issue. But I think um, for a lot of people who are newer, it is. I think ChatGPT makes it harder to learn that it is a problem. Because implementation needs to just be second nature. All right. With that, <laughs> it looks like we're uh, we're doing the next round. This is one versus Adam. And the winner faces our Sako. How about Dewey's opponent? And Skittles. Gotcha. Interesting, interesting. We should probably take a look at one versus Adam, though, huh? These room names are... These are always fun. Oh, oh, okay. Guess it's over. That was quick. 
That was a 10 minute round. <laughs> Wait, was this supposed to be 30 minutes? Oh, it was 20 minutes. Okay. Well, well done, Adam. Problem hoarding. <laughs> Nicely done, Skittles. Can we watch Skittles versus Dewey? I think that'll be a fan favorite. I guess we also have Arsako versus uh, GS going on right now. Okay, so um, Adam versus Arsako is going to happen in a bit. And then I think the Skittles game is probably going to happen a little later. Yeah, you do need to uh, take lunch and eat, or eat lunch, take some sort of break after doing this all day. Any other random questions from chat? Yes, let's read the editorial for this the problem Div 1C today. How on earth were you supposed to do that? Oh boy. <laughs> um, lots of math. Okay. Yes, so. Um, Chris, who are you on Discord? What's your Discord? JJ's wondering. You might be. You might be. Eating lunch, I though. am oh, never mind. Cos. Sorry, Just one more time. C L C O S. C L C O S. There you go. That was your answer, JJ. All right, does anybody in chat understand what this is saying? Oh, 
like this is just math and magic here. As a math main, no. Yeah, I don't know. I know a bunch of people who solved the problem, but like, I don't even know where to start with it. Doesn't it take n squared to find the explicit polynomial? I thought that was why FFT was so amazing because like you pick the special roots so that when you find the polynomial, it's like, it's fast. The answer is just find the polynomial using Lagrange interpolation and then you have your answer. Is that really it? That's a terrible problem. <laughs> mm. Problems impossible in Python. Yeah, I mean, obviously you only need the, the highest two coefficients, right? Because it's like, if you have like, I mean, I'll explain why, but that part was obvious to me. So if you have like three X plus five squared plus seven X plus five plus three, then when you do this, you'll have um, three X squared plus three times two times five X. Sorry, three times two times five plus three times five squared. Um, plus dot dot dot. Oh, you don't find the entire polynomial, only care about the highest three terms. Ah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, so if you only find two coefficients, you can do it faster. Interesting. Okay, so this just means I'm bad at Lagrange interpolation. So what finite differences is, and you sort of need to know it. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay, it's not bad. I guess if I, if I knew the approach, I think it would be useful. I just was not aware of this. So it's something I'll have to learn. Thank you for the introductions, uh, Rohan and uh, Shriyan and Liam. Yeah, getting getting hit in Python is very annoying. Oh, wait, was was memory tight? I guess, yeah, D was massive. Uh, let me reword that. The, the, the degree of the polynomial was massive. Like 2 times, 2.5 times 10 to the 6th. What were they trying to stop? Is there some like FFT thing that would pass otherwise? I don't know. I, I mean, I don't, I don't even know what the solution to this problem is, but it seems excessive to me. FFT, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Guys, there's a chat replay here and we have sponsors. <laughs> I won't ban anyone. It was funny. Okay. Um all right. Yeah. I don't know Adamant's real name. Do you think is Adamant in the chat? Alexander Kolkov. All right, I don't see him. It'd be cool. We just have a bunch of smart people in the chat who all know how to do these. Div one sees a bunch of people smarter than me. But yeah, not to interrupt, but the D versus Skittles match is happening right now. Let's go. Okay. Thank you for letting me know. Skittles versus versus who? Versus Dewey. Dewey. Oh, Dewey. Okay, just started. All right, fantastic. Guys, don't worry, we're gonna watch Dewey. There we go, Dewey's in lower one.
All right, Dewey is on a bunch of things. Dewey's doing a bunch of stuff right now. Welcome, Lydia. Uh, we're watching Dewey. Dewey is a massive underdog. He's made it to, like, um, very far in the loser's bracket. And we're watching him here. He's playing Skittles. And the match just started. That's what's up. Um, okay. So, find the product of all digits of some positive integer. Greater value makes the nirvana deeper. I've solved this problem before, I think. Find the maximum possible product of digits among all integers from 1 to n. So, it's probably... Like, so it's either n or you change one of the digits to a nine and decrement the one before it. Uh, or maybe it's all nines for the thing before that. Yeah, yeah. It's probably all nines for one fewer digit in almost all cases, I imagine. Which problem is this, though? Um, Nirvana. So Dewey is on Dewey's on the three hundred Nirvana. There aren't two five hundreds. What? Yeah, so he's trying the thing by itself, and it looks like he's going to try all nines. Is there anything else that might be the right thing to check? No one got accepted in Python. I'm sorry to hear that, man. I sympathize with it because I use Java, and there have been many times where the only thing between me and a correct solution has been the language that I chose to code it in. All right, Dewey's, Dewey's a little slow on implementation here. Yeah, it also looks like Dewey's idea is sort of correct, but it's not 100% correct. Because like, it looks like he's only going to decrement when it's uh, a zero, which isn't necessarily what you need to do. Yeah. Does all nines work? Is it either all nines or what you start with? Um, I think you might change like a suffix to nines and leave part of it or something like that. Actually, I'm not sure if that makes a difference. Uh, yeah, it probably does. Because if you have like all eights, mm. hmm. I all, guess the all numbers all, right. that you could just brute force it, but I think it might not be necessary. Can you, though? Although, like, if you have a 1 in the first place, then you can't. Well, oh, you can, actually, and that would work fine. I haven't solved this. I guess you could brute force the num like the suffix that you turn to 9s, right? The length of the suffix. Yeah. If you're really unsure. You could have two 999 instead of 999. Well, yeah, yeah. You might not turn it into all nines. Oh. Yeah, that's a good point. So if you have 3,000, you would want two 999. That's a really good point. <clears throat> Yeah, you should obviously make the suffix nines. Okay, yeah. The chat is incredibly helpful here. 
Couldn't you make a complete list for each number that gets you a new bigger product? Well, that sounds difficult to implement, doesn't it? Wait, actually, I don't think you make the suffix all nines, right? Because if you have like 88, then uh, it's actually better to take 88 than 79. But you might you might keep what you start with. But if you're going to change it, you change it to nines, right? I guess, yeah. Um Yeah, it looks like Dewey is going down the wrong path here. Unless I'm just misunderstanding something. Yeah, I think Dewey's only decrementing when there's a zero, which isn't quite right. Although, like, it wouldn't be that hard to change Dewey's code to the correct code. So if they find a mistake, it wouldn't be too bad. Yeah, okay. All right, let's take a look at, um, do we know what, <clears throat> what's, it's Dewey versus Skittles, right? Do we know what Skittles is solving? I'm um, trying to figure it out. It's 1553B. I don't know which column that is. All right, let's take a look. That is 400. Reverse string. Got it on the first try. <laughs> um... For 390, you want to do 189. Yeah, so you brute force which suffix to decrease? 389. Oh, I think. Yeah. yeah, I think one way you can do it is just like iterate over every single suffix and then set the suffix to 9999 and then try to like maximize the prefix, if that makes sense. That should be able to get the correct. Or just decrement the prefix by one, right? Uh, Yeah. From what it was before, what it started with? Yeah. So you'll keep some prefix, subtract one from it, and then fill it with nines. Mm -hmm. All yeah. right. So Skittles is working on reverse string, which is a completely different problem. It looks like uh, Dewey is unfortunately going in the wrong direction here. So we'll, we'll look at reverse string instead. So you have a string S with a chip, which you can place onto any character in the string. And after placing the chip, you move it to the right several times. Oh, you may move it to the right. No, you do move it to the right. Okay. Um, if it's the position I, you move it to position I plus one. Of course, moving to the chip to the right is impossible if it's at the last position. After moving the chip to the right, you move it to the left several times. You may perform this operation several times. Okay. Um, I see. When you place a chip or move it, you write down the character where the chip ends after your action. So if S is A, B, C, D, E, F, and you place it onto the third character, move it right two times, move it left three times. So you place it on C, left, left, so D, E. And then, oh, right two times, and then left three times. So then D, C, B, A, or G, C, B. Okay. You have two strings, S and T. You want to determine whether it's possible to perform the described operations with S so that you write down T as a result. Ah, okay. So you're looking for a substring in S followed by a reverse substring in S that's adjacent. And both of them are small. So it looks like you can brute force it, I would imagine, right? So just n squared, n cubed even. Can you do n cubed? Left, right. And then, yeah, you, you brute force the first pivot, second pivot. The length determines the length of the third pivot, and then you're set. Yeah, that seems to be correct. Let's take a look. Uh, this is this is Dewey still. Is this Dewey? Yeah, I think we're looking at Dewey. Um, Dewey seems like he is far from the truth. Or has he adjusted his solution? Um, 
in case you wanted an update in the other match that's going on, Arsico versus Adam GS, Mm -hmm. uh, it's going back and forth. So Arsico first solved the 300, then Adam GS solved the 500, and then Arsico solved the 400. And so now Adam GS needs to solve both the 100 and the 200 in order to win. Oh man, that's exciting. Um, should we go go check it out? Yeah, we can go check it out. Is there a Saka? Is there a Saka? Or Saka just says Discord open? <laughs> yeah, Adam GS is, is open though, and he's in lower too. Okay. Dual monitors, gotta love them. So Adam needs both of them. Yet another meme problem and whatever the 100 is. You have two integers A and B, calculate the number of pairs where the product plus the sum equals the things concatenated. Oh, Adam got 100. All right, so if Adam gets this, he wins. All comes down to this. In 10 minutes. Okay, how big are the numbers? Up to 10 to the 9. Ah, where A is less than A and B is less than B. Oof, this sounds tough. Hmm. Yeah, there's got to be an observation here. Wow. Uh A plus one times B plus one equals concat minus one or similar. Plus one, but wait, concat plus one, do I? Yeah, because you're adding one to both sides. Uh... Oh, it seems that if you write it, if you write out the problem statement in the math, in the form of like a math equation, do they think that's what they're getting at? Is that then you could simplify it? I don't, I don't know. Like, I think I've seen something similar where... The only ones that work are if B equals 9, and no matter what A is, B equals 9 works. But I'm not sure if you can prove that other B doesn't work, right? Hmm. So A times 10 to the B length plus B equals A times B plus A plus B. Right, this is the equation we want to solve. So if, yeah. If we brute, and, I guess you can do this by brute forcing the B length and then calculating. But go ahead. Yeah. 
But uh, so I'm pretty sure if B equals nine, no matter what A is, it'll work. Just the number, And the integer nine? yeah. And um, I don't know, we can try the samples. Oh, no, no, no. In the samples, there are other B that work. So, so yeah. Let's see. Oh, wait. Uh, if B equals 99, it also works. Ah, well, there's a pattern for you. <laughs> a bunch of nines. Hmm. I think that's supported by our observation of the math equation as well, because Yeah. it's just B plus one equals and that. <laughs> People are saying, yo, look at the chat. We already found it. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good job. Well done. Nah, tourist is the goat. Michael Jordan and LeBron have nothing on tourist. What are you guys talking about? Okay, so option three is right a brute forcer, which is what everyone would, of course, do in a real contest. But the problem is, this isn't a real contest. This is lockout, and everyone is rushing to solve this. 200 is impossible. Well, I mean, okay, even once you know B is a bunch of nines, how easy is this to solve? Oh, then A can be anything? Yeah, and I'm pretty sure based on the samples, um, or at least based on the third sample in particular, um, it's just the number of possibilities for B times the number of possibilities for A, and I don't think there's any cases that we're missing. So, so we're saying three, th one through three, seven divided by one ninety one should be Yeah. an integer, and it is, and it's seven. Ah, okay. Thank you, chat. Chat is four steps ahead of us. Yes, yes. You guys are very smart. You guys are very, very intelligent. Much more intelligent than than any of us. Yeah, factors of one through three, seven is a good thing to check for sure. I need someone on my team who remains at math. I cannot do math. I'm so bad at math. I'm a geometry main though. Geometry and data structures. Ah, terminals being opened. Okay, so while this is going on, it, it seems Skittles has solved both the 300 and the 400. So it's not looking too good for, um, Poor Dewey. for Dewey. Okay, looks like Adam may have figured this out, though. It looks like th he has power of 10 minus 1. That's all 9s. So, yeah, it looks like he's just manually... Checking it. it the, I think unless he has a bug somewhere, he should have the right answer here. Although the output he had did not have 1 through 3, 7, so could be wrong. Geometry and math are totally different things, guys. They're totally different. Geometry is its own its own bag of tricks. Geometry you can and visualize, math you can't. Sorry, go ahead. And I think Arsica has just solved it. Oh my goodness, for real? Yeah. Let's see. Oh. <laughs> Yeah.
Wow. Well done, Arsako. Well done. Let's go back and see. Um, where is Dewey? How's Dewey doing? Uh, did Dewey just lose? Nope, that's not Dewey. Where's Dewey? Dewey is in this round. Yep, thank you. Thank you. You guys are so helpful. Okay, so Dewey is in a bit of a pickle. If Dewey manages to pull this off in the last minute and 56 seconds, I will eat my hat. Uh, it's over. JK. Darn. Sorry, Dewey. It's good to see you. Seven's in the chat for Dewey. It was it was a good run, Dewey. It was a good run. Thank you, Chris. That gives Skittles the chance to play Hasler. All right. Thank you, Liam. Liam says the rest of the matches will happen in succession. No more two matches at the same time. All right. Awesome. So... The matches we have left are Skittle versus Hasler, Dominate, sorry, Yusako versus the winner of that, and the winner of that versus Amoeba, and then Dominator versus the loser, and then if the loser wins, the loser's bracket wins, then Dominator versus them again. So we have a couple matches left. Should be fun. Here we go. Hasler versus Skittles. Is that, do we have a, a start time for that? Admins. Um, for the Skittles match, we'll probably start in like a minute or two. Right, yeah, it's about to start. Okay. Here we go. Good luck, have fun. Skittles and Hasler, 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 or Arsako. No, it's Hasler. Arsako plays the winner. All right, let's take a look at problem three, table tennis. And people are playing table tennis. At first, the first two players line up and play a game. Then the loser goes to the end of the line and the winner plays the next person in line and so on. I do read the chat. I just choose not to answer some things, though. Um, I do have a Discord server. Yes, it's not it's not public. And also, this is not a a thing for me. This is a thing for we're doing another another person's um, tournament here. I'm not going to read the <laughs> that potential solution here. We're going to read the problem instead. Okay, loser goes to the end of the line. Winner plays the next person, and so on. They play until someone wins K games in a row. The player becomes the winner. Okay. For each of the participants, you know their power to play table tennis. And for all of these values, are, or and all these are different. In a game, the player with the greater power always wins. Determine who will be the winner. Number of people and the number of wins. Well, you know K, so there's no use in brute forcing K. Ah, yeah. I, I did answer the question about ChatGPT's effect on code forces and code Jeff. 
Um, summary is I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal because at the moment ChatGPT is an idiot. But uh, I had more to say earlier. You can go back and watch that if you want. It was like the first thing after the after the break. So, <laughs> no, you're good. Ah, Dominator Shrian. All right, welcome, Dominator. Yeah, this is a little tricky. Um, it's not obvious to me the order that people will challenge the current winner. Is it just like a circle? Maybe you can maintain a queue and then the pointer to the queue? Yeah, something like that. Um, it'll probably just... Because you, you can just brute force, and then once you get to the maximum person, if no one's already won, the maximum person's going to win. So you can just stop your brute force there. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, so this will be... Why is N so small, though? <clears throat> like, why is N only 500? I don't know. Maybe they just want to, like... Trick you? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, this is also only a 20 minute game bit weird but table tennis again are there multiple table tennises omg it's 3 a.m good question refresh on the stream for people who are new there is a high school dual championship going out here going on here and the rules are, there are five questions. If you solve one of these questions, then the other player gets no points for solving it. So the questions are worth 100 points to 500 points. Um, and you've got like 20 minutes to do a round. And it's two, player, two players, one v one. Whoever gets the most points at the end will win. Um, if you solve a, solve a problem, then the other player doesn't get any, like can't solve the problem. So there's a lot more strategy here than there is in like a normal Code Forces contest where you just solve the problems you can as fast as you can. But when you have something like this, there's a big amount of strategy in which problems you choose to work on. You might choose to work on something where um, like it's harder or less optimal if you think your opponent might be working on it and you can like snipe it for them and you can waste a bunch of their time. Uh, so it's it's interesting and it's it's pretty fun, and the nature of it being one v one I think makes it even more fun, because there are people for you to cheer on rather than it just being pretty much individual. You could have participated if you were high school or younger. Sorry, if you're below college, I guess technically. All right, Skittles got the five hundred. Nice. Let's go take a look at his screen, see what he works on next. Wait, Hasler was working on the 500, and I don't think he's noticed at this point. Oh, now he noticed. Okay. But yeah, still a bit of a time disadvantage. Looks like Skittle's moving on to Ice and Fire. Um... Yeah, so, so the goal for each player is to score 800 points. If you score 800 points, that forces a win. Is this the 400? Ice and Fire is at the 400. It is, yeah. Yeah, it is the 400. 300 looks annoying. I mean, maybe not annoying. Maybe it's easy.
Come on, good forces, you can do it. Is Hasler working on the uh, 400 as well now? Do you guys know? I think Hasler was working on the same phone. I'm not really sure. Yeah, no problem. That was a good question. That was a really good question. Wait, I don't think Hasler's working on the 400. What is he working on, Trayon, no. or anyone who knows? I don't know. It's in Russian. So. <laughs> Seems to be 300. Mm, gotcha. Yeah, Russian is tricky to read. Dobryutra. To any Russian speakers. Okay, so you have N minus one environments and N players. Um, hmm. Uh, so I guess the problem is a little confusing, but um, I'm pretty sure what it, how it works is um, there's like gonna be like player one plays player two, and then after they play each other, then the winner of that plays player three and so on and you basically want to figure out at the end like uh after all n matches have been decided um whether it's oh, or how many players uh had a chance to win so for Dep example if everything depending on their temperature levels yeah so if everyone if every single environment was hot uh yeah if every single um environment was hot then only the highest temperature player has a chance to win so yeah and then it's asking like essentially if the if the string was the first i characters what would the answer be if the string was the, like so that's why there's n different outputs if that makes sense um so the answer is how many players might win depending on what like the order of the uh, matches yeah so you obviously have the best chance to win if you compete last yeah hmm Both are on C now. Yeah, C looked very doable. C is, uh, I mean, it's like, it has confusing bounds, though. Table tennis. Uh, 
All right, well, um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if uh, you guys are, are being serious with these questions or not, but if we have an AI smarter than most grandmasters on code forces, humanity is screwed, right? Like we're just, we're done. If you can automate anything that tourists could figure out, like any problems tourists can figure out, humanity is just over. Like most humans are useless at most things. It's just, we are, we would be done. So I'm just gonna pretend that never happens. <laughs> Um, I think that's a safe assumption for life. If that happens, we're done, so don't consider that case, right? Just break early. Yeah. <laughs> Until then, I'm going to keep playing with my little toys and pretend the world is fine. Yeah, I also don't think, like, just in practice, I don't think there's enough code to train an AI on on that. Like, you need probably, like, terabytes of data. Certainly at least dozens of gigabytes. And I just don't think there's that much Grandmaster problem, that many Grandmaster problems in code. Like, you're going to overfit really hard. There are a lot of problems out there, but just, like, not that many. Like... We are many orders of magnitude less than you need. Probably like several dozen, in my opinion. I also don't know that much about ML, so I could be wrong. All right, looks like Skittles is... Working on the 300, what seems to be reasonable code. <laughs> I haven't read all of it, but the approach seems reasonable. need about 100 gigabytes of code okay maybe but yeah maybe i don't know i feel like mm, i don't know if that's true i think the the hard part is not the code the hard part is the problem solving and i also think that's something if you've used ai recently um i think you'll see that that's one of the things that's currently really really bad at like, ChatGPT is pretty good at coding, actually. Like, its implementation skills are actually rather good. Um, but it is horrendous at any sort of problem solving. If what the problem says doesn't match what it needs to do, it doesn't make that leap. It does what it says. Ooh, all right. Skittles got... Skittles got B. Well done, Skittles. Yeah, bro, to just take numbers in an hour. He just wrote his own samples. Okay, so Skittles has um, one, I think, uh, because he has solved the 300. Oh, did he have the 500 too? Yeah. Oh, nice. So he has <laughs> one, and now it will be a rematch between Skittles and Arsico. Who won the first time? Uh, Arsico won the first time, so, so yeah. It was taken down by. He was, amoeba? I believe, yeah, amoeba. 
So there's a good chance we get uh, Amoeba versus Dominator Deja Vu. Very possible. Yeah, well, okay, ChatGPT isn't trained on CP, but Google tried to do this, so I would be, I would be surprised. It's, the, the bigger problem is that it's really bad at, like, I, don't, I think you don't need to train it on CP, right? If I were going to do it, I would not train it on competitive programming problems to solutions. I would train it on editorials. I think what you need is you need to give the give ChatGPT a problem and have it output the editorial. That's what you need to train it on. If you can have it print the editorial for you and then have another one implement the editorial, I think that would be good. But it's just um, it doesn't have the ability to do the editorial part. It doesn't have the it's not good at the the problem solving aspect yet. Which makes a lot of sense if you think about it. That's what humans are bad at too. Like you can ask someone to implement code and they can get it pretty easily, but. Rip Hesler. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, I don't, I don't work at Google. I work at Meta, but I do still work at Meta. Yes. They don't want other winners other than Tourist. I don't know if Tourist is any worse than he was before. I mean, maybe he is, but... All right, here we go. Skittles versus Arsako. The round begins. Let's go watch him. Uh, Skittles is... Lower zero. I guess Skittles is going after 500 again. This is his, his classic. He's done this a couple times earlier. So what is the problem? You have a subset, and you either have to add an integer to it. And it has to be add a new max. Or you can query a max. Oh, no, you do something more complicated. Find a subset. The max in the set minus the mean. Well, the max is always the last thing added to the set, and then the mean is... Wait, why is that not super easy? That's super easy, is it not? Right? Um, so the div two, 30 minutes. Why is this 1800? I don't get it. You can add an integer to it, which is a new max, or you can find, oh, find a subset with the greatest value of max minus mean. Ah, so you're gonna use a prefix of the minimum things and then also minus the last. Minus the max. Uh, the max is always going to be the biggest one. Uh, yeah, and I guess you binary... I saw this, but I guess you do binary search. And then as you add a bigger max, your right pointer gets bigger. Wait, what? You can use a mouse to navigate your cursor in Vim? I had no idea that was a thing. Yeah, having seen the problems, it, it happens. I, 
I would go after the 500 if I were in this. Well, okay, so the ratings of the problems, like, you don't want problems that are too hard, because if it takes people a long time to solve them, then, like, in a, in a Div 1 contest, right, let's say you're 2200 rated, then the hardest problem, you, the problems you'll solve are, like, about, they go up to about, like, 22, 2300. But that's in a two-hour contest. This is a, like, if you spend two hours working on a problem, you'll never solve it. I mean, usually you don't spend two hours working on one problem in a Div 1 contest, but... You might spend an hour on one of them. If you solve three problems, you might spend an hour on the hardest one. But you, you can't spend an hour in a 30-minute lockout match on one problem. Oh, round got restarted because the 400 was known. What? Wait a minute. JK. All right, all right. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> yep. All right, try number two. <laughs> Looks like we got a new a new round here. Okay, let's close what we have. And we'll go watch Skittles, I guess. Seventeen forty-eight C. What's that? Zero sum prefixes already. The score of an array is defined as the number of indices where the sum of the prefix is zero. I guess that's easy to understand. You're given an array of length n. You can perform the following operations: select some integer such that a i equals zero. Replace the integer with an arbitrary integer. What's the maximum possible score of A that can be obtained by performing a sequence of such operations? Would you ever want to perform more than one operation? Uh, maybe. It's also pretty easy, right? You go from the end forward, and you set this thing to the maximum of everything after you. Uh, but maybe you don't. So you'd set this to like two, negative two million or whatever. Giving you a score of one. Oh yeah, so you might as well just set the value to whatever the prefix sum is and then make it zero going forward. But that might not be optimal, right? Because, like, there might be, like, later you have, like, a bunch of things that have exactly prefix sum 0 or prefix sum 2. So you might want to do negative 2 instead of... What do you like, mean? You can't have a bunch of things that have prefix sum 2, right? Oh, you have, like, 1, 2, and then a bunch of zeros? Um, Or you have, like... One, two, and then a bunch of plus one, minus one, plus one, minus one, stuff like that. Right? Uh, I guess. Yeah, I guess that's true. So how do you how do you do this then? Not sure. I guess every time you're like processing a zero, all of the things after it are more or less fixed. Is that true? All of the things. Yeah, I guess. I guess Skittles realized that was wrong and moved on. Or, no, he solved it. And he solved it. 
So, okay, I guess that makes sense where you like separate it into blocks of like, like between zeros and then you uh, find the most frequent prefix sum among that block. And then you um, set the zero to that specific thing so that you get the maximum frequency. Oh yeah, and you get you get it each time it occurs. Yeah. Yeah, so you can sum over every block. Hmm. Okay, interesting. Huh. All right. Well, Skittles is better than us. Good job, Skittles. You said the value is the best thing in the suffix that makes the most things zero. It doesn't necessarily make the exact prefix zero. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're right. I'm curious about that. What field of... Okay, all right, more questions. We'll do the questions after. <laughs> we're, we're, we're too focused on the match here. All right, Skittles is on 1046C, which is the 300. Wait, the 300? Is he going for the 400 and 300? Um, I guess so. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We also Arsico solved the uh, 500, so it's close. Ah. Oh, so, so then the 300 makes 300 a ton of sense. Time. Yeah. All right, what is this 300? Formula One officials decided to introduce a new competition. Cars are replaced by spaceships, and the number of points awarded can differ per race. Given the current ranking in the competition and the points distribution for the next race, your ta task is to calculate the best possible ranking for a given astronaut in the n after the next race. It's possible the given astronaut will have a unique number of points before the race. Oh, it's guaranteed. The, you know, the unique before the race. So you want this astronaut to win, and then you want everyone else to lose if they can? Yeah, so you can greedy, right? So you, you give this astronaut the win, and then you give every other astronaut from, you go from worst to best and give them the most points they can without beating you. Or if they have to beat you, you give them the most points. Seems right. Treep on 1800. I missed it. I missed it. Did they actually use a treep on the 1800? All right, looks like Skittles is on, oh, submitting already. Skittles got C. All right, it is neck and neck here. Going on to points on a plane, which is A. So that would give 800 in total. So Skittles only needs one of these two. He can get either one. Okay, that's smart. So Skittles is reading both of them. And if he loses, he will... Or like if, if one of them gets solved, he'll go, go solve the other one. He doesn't have CF notifications open though, so he might be in trouble. Um, a treep is an advanced data structure. It's really advanced. And if you want to learn a, more about it, I made a video on it. You can Google second thread treeps. Um, and I have a video where you can learn about it. It's pretty complicated though. If you have the hack pack for it, it's they're, they're super powerful. If you have the hack pack for it, you can just paste and then it'll be very easy. Okay. It looks like the fair nut is... Problem B, or is the 100? So, yeah, this is a, a an interesting strategy. That so Skittles is in a place where he can. Go for either of them. 
There's also quite a bit of time left. Yeah, mint stands for mod int. It's just like normal int, but it loops after you get to 10 to the 9th plus 7, or whatever modulo you want. Yeah, exactly. But the name is pretty pretty slick, you gotta admit. Mint for mod int, gotta love it. All right, looks like we're doing some sort of binary search here. For problem B, checking the tags, it looks like that's not necessary, but it might be easy enough. Binary search is wrong. 10 to the 9, 10 to the 9, negative 1 means you're doing it wrong. <laughs> oh, yeah, could it, you, you could have had the order backwards. Oh. Is that it? Does Skittles win? Skittles won. Well done, Skittles. Well done. Wait, I think Ursico actually sniped Skittles to that problem. Really? So it's all up to the 100 now. Oh, no. Okay, wait, do we have a, oh, it was updated earlier. Oh my goodness. All right, okay, hang on. Not over, false alarm, everybody. <laughs> um. Okay, so Skittles has read this one. So he knows what to do and he's just jumping into it. We haven't read it. Let's take a look. You can place a chip at any point with integer coordinates. The cost of placing a chip is equal to the absolute value of the sum of the coordinates or the sum of the absolute value of the coordinates. The cost of placing n chips is equal to the maximum among the cost of each chip. You need to place n chips on a plane in such a way that the Euclidean distance between each pair is strictly greater than 1, and the cost is minimum possible. So what is the maximum one you need to place? How big is n? Really big. Uh, yeah, so he's placing them in squares. He places the first square, then the next square, the next square, the next square. Um, but you want to place them in diamonds, right? Is diamonds the same? Um, can you place them in diamonds? Uh, so I guess it's you place one in the first round, then you place four, then you place nine, right? Um... Why would you, like, you place, like, so zero and then all of the things with distance one, like the up, down, left, right? Like Manhattan, no, but Manhattan distance one. You can't, you can't do that because the Euclidean distance has to be greater than one. Oh. Hmm. Oh, that's weird. Okay. Oh, I think the solution is either you just either you place all the chips at odd Manhattan distance or you place all the chips at even Manhattan distance. Like, and then like, like checkerboard style. Yeah, yeah. And then you basically check which one is the best. Okay. And you binary search or brute force to see how big the checkerboard needs to be? It's also mm -hmm. kind of tricky. Like, how do you build a checkerboard by, man by increasing Manhattan distance? Well, you can calculate how many uh, points are at each Manhattan distance pretty easily. So um, I guess what you would do is 
you would just calculate the number of points that are that Manhattan distance, and then you sum it all the way up because um, I think I think it's it it uh, scales up like ends or I think the number of points goes like is proportional to the size squared. So, oh wait, no, n is ten to the eighteen, so you can't even do that. Huh. Wait, then you would have to probably do some sort of binary search, right? So you could do, yeah, I guess you probably checkerboard. But like, if you look at the things with Manhattan distance too, you have like a stop sign. There are eight things, but how do you, I don't know, it's not obvious to me how you You're going to need a formula. Mm. Yeah. Are you going to need a formula? Probably some sort of formula. So what is it? So the first time it's 4 plus 8. Oh, does it? doesn't double it every time. No way. It's linear, right? Then you have 1... Oh, wait, actually, there are four, and then there are, what is this, 12? I think four, 12, yeah, and then 20. But it looks like Skittles has just solved it, so he will be advancing. So speedy. Well done, Skittles. And we will have Skittles versus Amoeba now. Does Amoeba have time? I know he said he had to go at 3.30. Um, oh wait, does he have time? Or maybe it was Orsako who said he had to go at 3.30? Um, For those of you yeah. who... They're starting the match now, so... Okay. Alright, so yeah, Skittles and Amoeba. And the winner of this play is Dominator, and the winner of that wins. Here we go. Um, okay. Oh, yeah, Amoeba says he needs to leave at 3.30. So you're making it 20 minutes or something? I guess they're just going to start, and Amoeba's just going to compete within the first, like, what, 23 minutes? Try and win and, fast? Yeah. Win fast, die young. That's what I always say. All right, here we go. Let's, let's take a look at Skittles, our fan favorite here. So it looks like going home. Which problem is that? 500, was, his classic yeah. strat. So Skittles didn't like the 500, it looks like. Moving on to the 400. Amoeba is very good at math, so we'll play into his favorite. Yeah, all right. Looks like there are a couple math problems here. No, maybe maybe the five hundred is a little bit more data structure than the math data structure. -y. All right, let's go read the four hundred since. We can't really un Skittle screen. ORAC and LCM. For the multi set of positive integers S1 to SK, to find, we know what the GCD and LCM are. 
Okay, you have a sequence A of length n. He came up with the multiset T equals the LCM of all pairs of elements. He asked you to find the value of the GCD of this for him. In other words, calculate the GCD of the LCM of all pairs of elements in the given sequence. Um, yeah, it might actually be pretty small, right? If you have any, if there's any prime number that isn't present in at least all but one of the numbers, then, oh, I've solved it already. Okay, well, I made the observation, felt smart. If there's any number that isn't present in at least all but one of the numbers, then it's going to be not part of the GCD of LCMs. Or I guess, yeah. In general, at least if n's big enough. Maybe there are special cases for when it's small. We are depending on morals. There's not really any way of getting around depending on morals, unfortunately, because at the end of the day, um, you could, you, well, you, you could check their screencast. They could, but at the end of the day, you could also just look at the answers, right? The answers to all these problems are public. You could look at those. So we have to depend on morals. Without brand new questions, there's no way of getting around it. Um, this looks like this is it. There's no way you can actually calculate the LCM of everything, right? This is not going to work, surely. Oh, the GCD. Oh. All right, never mind. <laughs> Skittles has confirmed it is not the correct answer. Yeah, people who are good are very reliably have high morals. What? What is this? Um, okay, so Skittles is trying some crazy stuff here. Let's... Oh, I guess this is finding all the primes? Okay, well... You could have realized that from the fact that it says primes. The second smallest prime factor? Mm, just the smallest, right? Are you talking about the answer, JJ? It's quite a bit of code. Looks like nothing's been solved. Let's check Amoeba. So um, this is, or I can LCM. This is what Skittle's working on. Amoeba is the red panda. Looks like Amoeba has lots of friends that are all... Um, all red pandas. A different GCD problem, but also a GCD problem. So they're different, working on different things. Does there exist an array B of n plus 1 integers where the GCD of the adjacent things is equal to AI? So that means each of the adjacent things. Ooh. Yeah, what does that mean? It's not, not a hard problem, but... So the GCD of the adjacent things... If it doesn't have an integer, 
that means one of the, if it doesn't have a factor, that means one of the adjacent pairs needs to not have that factor. So, but the other one is allowed to. I guess it also means that You, you, oh, so you know what the array B would be, right? Yeah, yeah. So you know the array B is just the LCM of every adjacent pair. And then you, you can just check if this one works, I guess. Why is this not possible? Because the LCM is 4, and then it's also 4. So this would give you 444? Four, four, four. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Just like what Liam said. Exactly what Liam said. So you can make the array first. Is that what he's doing? Probably. It's a pretty easy problem. Wrong answer? Okay, let's see. Maybe it's not. Um, hmm. I can't read this code. A lot of code. But yeah, you can build the array, which is just the LCM of all pairs. And then once you have that, you check the adjacent GCDs. All right, amoeba solving problem B, putting them in the lead. And it looks like Skittles got got D, got the 400. Nicely done, Skittles. Skittles is speedy. Scary, scary. All right, so now this is interesting. What happens next? What do they choose to work on? We'll definitely check both players' screens here. I think Skittles is working on the 500. So if he solves that, then it's going to be game over. So. And Amoeba opened up going home. That's the 500. That's yeah. also 500. All right. So it's 1v1. So are there four different integers that have, or four different positions that have the same sum? Amoeba doesn't like it. Amoeba's going after something else. That troll n squared problem. What do you mean by that, Thomas? How is it a troll n squared problem? Um, I think it's because he uh, coded an n squared solution that shouldn't pass, but passed. Well, no, it's because the intended solution is that you brute force and keep track of all the sums, and then the amount of sums that you get to before you find the answer is like relatively small. Oh, it's you have to notice that the sums are bounded. Yeah. Uh, wait, are the values bounded? How big are the values? Uh, the values are up to 2.5 times 10 to the 6th. Oh, so, so they're only like 4 times 10 to the 6th, or 5 times 10 to the 6th sums? Yeah, something like that. Mm, okay. The American Erecto. I'll take it. I don't think brute force all pairs passes, does it? I would hope not. Yeah, sometimes even people who are like 
Master Plus, Grandmaster Plus will just get stuck on easy stuff for no reason. All right, Amoeba's on 1190A. Is Skittles on the 500 still? It's at 300. Yeah, Skittles switch problems as well. Mm, okay. What is he on? Do you know? Uh, 1223B. So that could so the, be the, two the 100. That's the 100. Yeah. Okay. All right, so Skittles is on this one. If you're given two strings of equal length, you can perform any mind block, yeah. Two strings of equal length of Latin letters, you can perform any number of operations on the string. During each operation, you choose two adjacent characters in any string and assign the value of the first character to the second or vice versa. Note you can perform this operation with the string T. Determine it's possible to turn S into T, applying the above operation any number of times. So it's just, do they share a character? Yeah, right? Do they share a character? Yeah, looks like that's what Skittles is implementing right now. So I'd put Skittles at 500, which would be potentially a really big problem. Looks like he got it. Skittles got it. All right. So Skittles is at 500. So now Amoeba has to solve both. That's certainly very uncomfortable. What's Amoeba working on? The 300 right now. So Amoeba needs the 300 and the 500. Brutal. Brutal. Or he could solve the 500 and hope that Skittles doesn't solve the 300, but... No, even if he... Oh, if he gets the... Oh, then he has 700 points. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Good point. But it seems unlikely because um, Skittles, like, being a master, I think, um, should definitely be able to solve for 1,400 in 16 minutes. So he does likely have to get both problems. He almost has to keep working on the 300 because like, yeah, if Skittle, Skittles gets it, then the 500 isn't even enough. Skittles is speedy. Skittles is like next generation of geothermal. I'm telling you. I was underestimating him. He's, he's faster. He's a faster typer than I am a reader. It would be sad if he had to leave before it round ended, but. On the bright side, it looks like his chances of winning this are very small. So. It's not like he's, he's going to have to throw away the finals. All right, Skittles is coding C. Does anybody here use IntelliJ? This is the first time I've seen somebody use IntelliJ for computer programming. I've never seen it before. Or I guess this is C Lion, huh? Not IntelliJ. <laughs> Fair enough.
Looks like Amoeba has solved the 300, so... Really? Um, All right. it looks like um, it's a race to the 500. With 13 minutes left. So Amoeba's going to be late <laughs> to his appointment. He's not coming up now. All right, let's read it. Going home. Oh, yeah, this is the, the pairwise thing. Okay, you can definitely do this in 13 minutes if you notice this bound. Amoeba has five. Mm. Yeah, Amoeba has Amoeba has five hundred points, but um, oh, five minutes. Yeah, yeah, Amoeba's got five minutes. That's a really good point. <laughs> you can solve the problem in thirteen minutes, but you maybe can't solve this problem in five. I think. I do think it's much more approachable if this is the last problem there, right? If you don't have the option of like thinking it's hard and you're forced to think about the problem, you're probably going to read the bounds more carefully. So I think there is that, that advantage. Though Skittles is just staring into the void. Amoeba's got four minutes. Can he do it? How many matches left? After this one, um, there are not too many. This one determines who plays Dominator in the finals. So potentially either two or three matches. So this one and then one or two more. So we're, this is almost almost the finals. And this will be over in a couple of minutes. This problem is also really scary because usually things like this involve some sort of data structures, um, but you don't in this case. I don't think guaranteeing fair gameplay is the goal here. Um, yeah, I think he's just thinking, to be honest, but we can watch Skittle. Ah, Skittle's figured it out. Oh, maybe not. Ah, okay. So it looks like Skittles is has found it. Yeah, he has. So Skittles has the right answer. It's looking like a GG. Skittles probably needs like 30 more seconds.
And that's it. Well done. Good job, Skittles. Ah, uh, thank you, Skittles. I appreciate it. You see what he did there? He moved his window over from the other monitor so we could all see the result. Oh, wrong answer test three. Oh no. Oh no. Um Why would that be? Uh is it three if he has three copies of the same number? And now he's writing a brute forcer for it. I think three copies of the same number is what he's getting wrong. Because if there are three copies of like, if you have like three, 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 ten, the answer is no, but I think he'll print yes if he's not careful. So Skittles is writing a brute forcer. It would be awesome to be able to see. Oh, oh. TLE 8, wrong answer 2. I don't know if anybody caught that. So many nested loops, TLE probably. You can have multiple nested loops. Oh! And Amoeba did it. He did it. What do we do? Guys, what do we do? Amoeba just won. Amoeba's in the finals and he has to go. <laughs> what do we do? It got delayed <laughs> by 30 minutes. <laughs> oh boy. All right. Is Dominator here? It's hilarious. All right, this is the finals. I delay the appointment too. This is the, you made it to the finals. Well done, Amoeba. Sorry, Skittles, you were so close. Um, yeah, I wonder, I guess, yeah, GG Skittles. Well done. Let's let's take a look at his code. Maybe I he may have gotten. I have an idea which case he may have gotten wrong. Custom invocation. Okay. Language C. What's the input format here? Okay, what if it's four three 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 ten? I think he'll print oh he does print no. Why does he print no? Oh, because of the counts? Uh, no, I think no should be correct. No, right? no is correct, but how is he, like, why does he print no? I thought his code would print yes. What about three 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 three? Did we get that right? Oh, but three 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 three. Okay, so he's just missing if there are four of the same thing, right?
All right, there we go. Doing our part. Here we go. Okay, all right, all right. Next one, we got Dominator and Amoeba. Rip. Sorry, sorry, man. Oh, oh, sorry about that. Darn. Okay, um, let's see Dominator. What's Dominator doing? Lots of pandas. What is the panda meme here? Are these like fans of uh, the Chinese team? The red panda team? Or is red panda from Moscow? They are cute. Yeah, I, I agree. Is that is that it? They're cute and people just, it became a meme? Okay. Yeah, fair enough. It's a good reason. All right, let's take a look at Vika and squares here. So this is the finals. Welcome to the finals. For anyone who's joining us, this is uh, the finals of high school lockout championship. We've got Dominator versus Amoeba. Um, and Viking squares. Okay. All right. Vika has N jars with distinct paints. All of the jars are numbered one to N, and the ith jar contains AI liters of paint color I. Vika has an infinitely long rectangular piece of paper of width one of a bunch of one by one squares. Squares are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Vika decided she will start painting squares one by one from left to right, starting from the square numbered 1 uh, in some arbitrary color. If the color was painted color X, the next square will be painted color X plus 1. What's the maximum number she can paint? Okay, so you start like here, I guess, in that case. Just make the least common one the last one to go. That's true. What if there are multiple least common ones, though? No, I well, I think that's kind of it, but that is it. But, like, what if there are multiple ones? Yeah. So if there was a one here and, like, here, you have to pick the right one. Um, I think you can also maybe brute force which one you start with and then calculate it quickly. Right, you want the first, the biggest gap between the least colored ones. Yeah, yeah, that's it. You take the biggest gap. And then you do the whole thing some number of times. We cannot see Amoeba's screen. Let's look at Dominators. Oh, maybe we can. Ah! Okay, so Amoeba is done. And it's right. Nicely done. Okay, what's Dominator on? A different problem. Connect three, it looked like. Yeah, the so Dominator's on the 300. Skittles just got, I think what was that, it was either the 200 or the 400. Or sorry, not Skittles, Amoeba. Amoeba has 200. Skittles is on 300. The real question is, what do you do next? Once you have the 200, do you go for five? Bug in code. That is 400. Interesting. That's going to be a problem, though. <laughs> if... If Dominator gets the 300, having being able to like having the bug in code is going to be very inconvenient. Um, Carvalian, wait. I 
I'm not sure what you mean, Carvalian. Where the I minus one is not common. Yes, amoeba. I'm sorry if I said Skittles, I meant amoeba. Um, but yeah, it could cause... It could cause problems. What is the 300? Connect three. What is this? Man, please take a break. I don't need a break. I do this for years. I do this all day. Three friends, Alice, Bob, and Charlie, go buy three distinct plots of land, A, B, and C, in the forest. They're all covered by trees, and they want to visit each other, so they clean some plots of trees. After cleaning, one friend should be able to visit these. And wh what's the thing? What's the smallest number they need to clean? Ooh, this is kind of annoying, isn't it? Sounds very caseworky. Easy to get wrong. Are the X's and Y's independent? I don't think they're independent. You got it. Really? Okay. Well done. Good job, man. Good job. All right. That's an update. So it's 200 to 300. Amoeba has quite a bit of progress on the 400. Yeah, I don't I don't know how they were sorting. Really? Okay. Yeah. Not Linux never dies. Are you not Linux? Not Linux never dies. Are you um uh Dewey? Or are you just a Dewey fan? Part of Dewey fan club. I haven't read the 500. Let's take a look. That's not the 500. Oh, wait, is it? No, it's not. You're given an array A of length N. You're asked to process Q queries of the given format. Given integers I and X, multiply AI by X. So... After each query, you need to process the GCD of all elements of the array. Multiply by x. So you want to prime factorize x. It seems very doable, to be honest. Like you need to know for every prime factor how many times it appears in the array. And you also need to know when you multiply by something, is the prime factor new? 
And like how many times did each prime factor appear beforehand? So it's a little annoying, but I think it's doable. I think for 500 points, it might be worth it. Looks like Dominator is not doing this one though. Something with strings? Oh wait, what is S? String S. Amoeba solving 400, yeah. Amoeba is on 400. So I guess what what would Dominator be doing? 100? The 100? It's an interesting strategy. Does the 100 ever mean anything? Uh, I guess I would definitely not be doing the 100 if I were Dominator. Is this strings? Oh no, why is Dominator doing the 100? What are you doing, Dominator? Dominator, no, don't do the 100. The 100 is meaningless. You only get the 100 if, if, um, Amoeba's, if you beat Amoeba to the 400, that's the only time it matters. Don't do the, the 100 is a bad move. Surely, very bad move. Like, look, okay. If Amoeba gets the 400, you lose. If Amoeba doesn't get the 400, you should get the 400. If Amoeba goes for the 100, he's wasting his time. So really, the 100, pro the 100 point problem at this point is useless. There's no reason. There's It doesn't matter if this is right. Right? This is just totally useless. You're not going to debug it now, are you? Oh, no. Are we reading the right thing? Chess tournament, yeah. Oh, no. Dominator, don't go. Don't debug. Don't debug the 100. No. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. How's Amoeba doing? This is a uh, this is a very non-judicious use of time. Even if Amoeba mid leaves midway, you don't need a hundred. You you just never need. Like, look, the score right now. You understand, the score is three hundred two hundred, right? Dominator got three hundred first. So even if Amoeba gets, even if Amoeba gets. Chess tournament and leaves midway, he still loses. Like the only, yeah, it just doesn't matter. There's, 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 there's no reason. A hundred is a hundred percent useless. So this, this time he's spending right now debugging. Like, it's no matter what, no matter even if he gets a, it, it, it is not. This is not a good use. He, he's wasting his time. He could be twiddling his thumbs or going to the bathroom or something, and that would be a better use of time here. There's there's no there's no situation no matter what happens where this is at all beneficial. Other than you want to look cool. And in the finals too. Ugh. How's Amoeba doing? That's a great question. Let's check. Yeah, okay. No one cares about just stop working on chess tournament dominator. All right, Amoeba is on bug in code. That is problem. That's the 400. So Amoeba's going for the 400. And it looks like he hasn't submitted. We can't really see much of Amoeba's screen, though. So it's not super useful. Well, I don't know, I guess. But if Dominator is going for the 400 or the 100, you just go for the 500, right? And if Dominator solves the 100, you don't get the 500, Dominator wins. Right, all, <laughs> all the 100 does is force um, Dominator to go for the 500. Is he done? I 
unclear. He might be done. He might be just curious about what how Dominator's doing. All right, Dominator got the 100. To no avail, but. So now he can get the 400 or the 100. I don't know, I would have gone for the 400 first, but. I'm not screaming. I also don't want your one euro. You can keep your one euro. <laughs> um, yeah, he should. He definitely. Okay. So yeah, you're right. You're right. 100 is not 100% useless. You can get 100 and 400 and win. But it's very obvious that um, Amiibo was not working on the 100 this whole time. So, you know, on balance, there's no there's no reason to go for the 100 first. You should have gone for the 400 first and then... Because if 400 were solved, 100 would be completely, completely useless. All right, now he's going for GCD of an array, which is the 500 anyway. So how much time is left to... 12 minutes left. Apparently CF is broken. Rip CF. Oh, for real? Dang, in the finals? Everybody's refreshing. They're so excited about this. I don't know. It's not broken for me. I'll probably come back. Maybe the submission part's broken. Okay, it's back. Yeah. Look at the screen. Yeah, all right. Looking at the screen. Oh, yeah, to see if CF is broken. That would have been good. All right. A pair is good if and only if. So if Dominator wins this, he wins. For sure. That's it. If Amoeba wins it, uh, goes to the next round. So we're not done yet. Interesting. We don't have the other screen. Okay. Well, we'll see. Do you want to take a look at the problem? This is the finals, but this is the this is the finals, but and Amoeba needs to win twice. He's gotta win this one and then that'll be like the final finals. And then he's done. But if um if Dominator wins here, game's over. Because Dominator hasn't yet lost. I've never seen someone use Code Chef IDE or um, <laughs> or IntelliJ C++. I guess C Lion C++. I thought VS Code and Vim were just like the overarching mains. All right, should we take a look at the problem? What it all comes down to? I guess we did. This is the is this the GCD one? Something GCD related. Let's see. Um, okay, C and D. Nice. GCD of an array. Yeah, so this multiply by an element and query the ith element. <laughs> you are 100% right, yeah. All beginners use far, uh, far manager because they think it'll make them tourist. Yeah, it's true. It's true. It's pretty funny. I looked at it, and it's, like, hilariously bad. Like, I, I, I saw a tourist use it, and I'm like, what the heck is this thing? And then it's just, like, very, I don't know. I have no idea why he uses it. It doesn't make any sense to me. Maybe he just likes it, but I just feel like there are so many useful things you could have your IDE do, and it just doesn't do them as far as I'm aware. Maybe it does. Yeah, so how do you actually do this problem? It's like... It's 
It's not difficult per se, you just have to be really careful not to make it n squared. All right, let's look at problem D. Yeah, I don't know much about problem D. Is segment tree overkillable? Wait, this is literally the 500, uh, this one here. What the heck? Are these the same problem? Okay. <laughs> Recently, a serious bug has been found. The head of company of F company wants to find a publish him. He set up an organizational meeting who bugged the code. For each of encoders of the meeting said, I know for sure that either X or Y did it. The heads of the company decide to take those two suspects and invite them to the office. Naturally, he considers their coders opinions. That's why the head wants to make a choice such that at least P of N coders agreed on it. The coder agreed with the choice of two suspects if at least one of the suspects in the meeting was chosen as a suspect. In how many ways can the head of F choose two suspects? So you choose two suspects and you want at least P of N to agree with it. There is only one way to know the minimum of the array after each update. We wouldn't need a seg tree for D. Amoeba got the 400. Hold on a minute. What? Amoeba got the 400. What? Well done. Well done, Amoeba. You guys should be in the Zooms. If you want. If you want to talk. And here is where Dominator is kicking himself. Here's where Dominator is kicking himself because this 100 is coming back to bite him right now. This is why you do not um, <laughs> do the 100 when you have the 400 or the 500. I don't know what you're talking about um, by side trees ND. I don't know what, the pro what problem you're talking about. But I, I'm like, yeah, the 400 seems pretty doable. You can make it a graph theory problem and then you want to like just decrease all the edges of the graph and then you're good. Oh yeah, for this one? You mean for this one, for the 500? For the 500, you can't really do segment tree, right? Cause it's, yeah, it's very big and yeah, et cetera. Um, you need an under mod. I mean, like, it's not actually that big because it, like, if n is big, then the GCD says small, but if n is really small, then it, then segment tree doesn't work. And I don't think you can, like, do a sort of meet in the middle thing. It doesn't really work like that. Because you're going to run into just, like, very weird cases where, yeah, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> I, I won't explain it. Um... Yeah, I think I think this sort of data structures approach is the way to go. The real question though is, are you going to run out of time? Because you only had six minutes ago, left, like a couple of minutes ago. You have three minutes thirty five seconds left. So if Dominator can do it in this three minutes that are remaining, then he wins. Otherwise, it'll be the final final. I know. Yep, Coach FID is crazy. It's crazy. So if Dominator wins this, he wins. If he finishes in the next three minutes, he wins. 
Otherwise, uh, he gets one more chance to beat Amoeba. Because Dominator hasn't lost. Three minutes indeed. Amiibo, yeah, Amiibo's gonna have to find something with his appointment. For those of you who are joining recently, Amiibo had an appointment like half an hour ago and then he delayed it by 30 minutes because he made it to finals. And now he's about to win the first finals and he'll have to delay his appointment another 30 minutes. All right. Somebody says you can use the minimum of the array for each way in the middle. Once found the sub prefix, you can just divide the max dist. I don't know what you're talking about. Why would you need a segment tree? You just need a count, right? There's, yeah, I don't think there's any part of, like, the, the rangeness doesn't matter. So I don't think you need any segment tree. You just need a count, and you need for every index whether or not um, that prime is there. Or, like, how many times the prime is there. So just a lookup table is fine. You don't need, like, the range part isn't important here. And are we done? Is that it? It's time up. How much is left? How much is left? We're almost done. I have an idea, but I can't code it in two minutes. Oh, his appointment's only 10 to 15 minutes, so he'll be back. Okay. Two minutes and six seconds. Yeah, it's, it's fun. It's fun looking. Here's a chance for a clutch submit. It doesn't look like he's done. This is, I, I don't know. If I coded this, I would make it a lot of, a lot of code. negative three seconds all right looks like that's it for the first round of finals so amoeba gets one more shot uh, or sorry dominator gets one more shot to beat amoeba otherwise amoeba, amoeba wins all right so amoeba is going to be back in 20 to 30 minutes is that the plan 20 to 30 minute break all right sounds good um, where do we go for the closing ceremony?
All right. Hello, everyone. Um, so the finals haven't been played yet, so we don't have results for that, but we have results for everything else, so we're just going to um, announce those now. So um, we have prizes for top eight, so we're going to announce those. In eighth place, we had one. Um, the prize for eighth place is a $25 EOPS coupon. Okay. Um, can everyone see my share, by the way? Yes, no, maybe. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, they have like books and stuff if you want to buy this or like classes. Okay, in seventh place, we have Dewey, um, the same prize. Also the same thing. In fifth place, we have Adam GS. All right, in fourth place, we have Arsico. Um, we have a bit more stuff for fourth place. In third place, we have Skittles fourteen twelve, and then the finalists, um, Amiibo one and Dominator, are gonna play the finals. So we'll figure that out after. All right. Um, yeah. So I'll be stick around for the finals. Um, but yeah, we'll see you guys soon. Welcome back. We have the finals come up in just a bit. Not sure what's going in here. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of funny. Uh, yeah, so the finals will start in a couple minutes, probably like, uh, I guess let's just keep this open, huh? Final starts soon. I don't know who mentioned me earlier. But yeah, that was the, the closing ceremonies. People may have been trying to challenge me. I haven't verified my handle a second thread on this Discord yet. So I don't know. Um, final Amoeba versus Dominator coming up soon. Delayed till, okay, let's change the, change this. Do, do, do. 4.35. That's no longer 25 minutes. That's in... 13 minutes. We'll say 10 minutes so I don't have to update it.
All right. Yeah, I guess I'll see you in <laughs> see you in ten minutes then. Amoeba had a had an appointment he had to go to, so he had to leave a bit early. getting pings here so many pings what's going on ah they they're manually setting my handle all right yep do i have to go confirm something submit a compile error on watermelon something like that got any grapes a duck song was an amazing song. I missed this. Green grapes, purple grapes, and black grapes. What were the problems in this round? Are they all memes? Oh, no. Darn. All right, too long. I won't read it. But it would be cool. Yeah, here's the finals. We have the, the grand final round here which is amoeba versus dominator should be fun Apparently Dominator has another match tomorrow, another duel tomorrow, that he is streaming. Uh, Dominator versus the Scars. Maybe the Scars is streaming it actually. How good is Dominator? I guess pretty good. Oh, you're in the comments. Ha. Huh. <laughs> streamed by a friend. Wait. Dominator versus the Scars, but streamed by a friend. Interesting. Okay. Sorry, I didn't connect your name to your handle. Shreon. Wait, so who is... I'm confused. You say it's streamed by a friend. Is it not streamed by this guy? Oh, is he, this is not the scars? Okay, kind of funny. Ah, all right, interesting. Very cool. Could have sworn I copied the username. I could have sworn I copied it. That checks out. Same looking guy.
This is comical. This is a really comical looking graph. It's like a it's like a mountain. I gotta love it. Um all right. Amoeba, you ready? Oh, I guess Amoeba's not ready for another couple minutes. Letter League. What is Letter League? We're dueling. 800 duel. All right. All right. I'm not a coward. Where's my VS code? You can't stream peek though, you know, or maybe you can. I don't know. It depends who I'm who I'm playing here. Let me let me just get set up here. One sec, and we can do a do a duel. Um, okay. Yarn modules. How did this happen? I really need a script to do this. I still don't have one. I don't know how I don't have one, but I, I don't. Uh, it would take like literally like 10 minutes to just write, probably not even that. I could probably do it in five minutes. Five minutes to write a script. And I would save so much time, but I have not gotten to it yet. Okay. All right, we're doing the duel. How do I accept it? I need a check mark. Uh, all right, I'm dueling. Oh, it's, wait, what? Is it a multiplayer duel? One problem. All right, here we go. Five minutes, one minutes. I can't even read this. Literal cancer. Oh, maybe they are watching the stream, so they'll see it. Oh, they're all zero points. Wait, no, one point. Okay, easy version. Get the problem over here. Get the problem over here. Boop. Now I'll hitting deck. All right, Alice's end cards. Each is black or white in a deck. Alice deals her cards to herself. Bob dealing several cards at the top. One card to herself. Two cards to Bob. Three cards to Bob. Four cards to herself. Five to herself. Six to... Okay. How many cards will Alice and Bob have at the end? Um, the number of cards. And N is small. All right, get me VS code. Where's VS code? VS code, VS code, VS code, VS code. Um, oh wait, what? How many Alice, how many Bob? Okay. Um, A, uh, int N, all right. Int, uh, yeah, four, int amount equals one amount, uh, or true. Now I guess we can just do this. Uh, N greater than or equal to zero. Um, amount plus plus if amount uh modulo two oh wait so it's alice bob bob is that it oh where's the problem statement problem statement it's alice bob bob okay so if amount um plus one divided by two uh modulo two equals zero then int a equals zero, b equals zero. Out that print line a plus space plus b. Um, then int delta. Okay, then um, n minus equals amount. N minus equals amount. Or minus equals d, I guess. And a plus equals amount plus equals d. Else b plus equals d. I've totally lost on time here. Are we done? We're done. GG. You beat me. How much did they beat me by? More than a minute? No, nah, not too much more than a minute. I need my tabs up here. And I'm not even close. Oh, uh, why not? What? 
Do I have an infinite loop somewhere? I guess I do. Rip. All right, GG. Yeah, no, I like that because uh, when there's one when there's one problem, you can stream snipe because I'll just be distracting you the whole time. Welcome back, Amoeba. Hello, sir. I think you should sleep. I'll sleep when I'm dead. I appreciate the thought, though. Wrong answer. Test one. You guys are speedy. You guys are so quick. Oh, you got it. Oh, nice. What's the difference? All right, I think we're starting in a minute here. Um, ba -ba -do -ba -do. Final starting now. Eight submissions after. All right, here's the round. Other commentators, feel free to join in the Zoom. Love to hear from you. All right, this is the finals. We have the uh, the finals Amoeba versus Dominator. We have... Here, let's get rid of this. We don't need this anymore. We have the, the grand grand finals. In the previous match, Dominator beat Amoeba. Um, and Dominator has only lost one match ever. Amoeba has also only lost one match ever. And the winner here wins the finals. Yeah, we can do something like that. I don't know. Now that's scuffed. Okay. Well, we'll see. Tourist is clearly number one. Who do you say is number two? Ben's pretty good. NQ is pretty good. There are also a lot of really good young kids in, in China. So, I don't know. There are a lot of people it could be. I could be convinced. I don't have a super strong opinion. All right. Yep, GLHF. Here we go. Um, okay. Let's watch. This Dominator? I guess we're both here. So this is Amoeba. Is Amoeba the favorite? I don't really know if there is a favorite, to be honest. ZS the coder is playing a game. The number is displayed on the screen. Uh, there is a number and two buttons, plus and square root. Initially, two is displayed, and there are n plus one levels. You start at level one. You can press the plus button, incrementing the screen by k. Or you can press the square root button, and it becomes square root. You can only press square root if it's a perfect square. All right. Guess, like, guess Amoeba doesn't like it. Let's Dominator on. So it looks like they're reading quite a few problems here. Subsequences of length two. In one move, you can choose any character and ask to replace it with any lowercase letter. More formally, you choose some I, replace that character with something else. You want to do no more than K replacements such that, uh, in such a way that maximizes the number of occurrences of T as a subsequence. Was T length two? I'm not sure. Does he have code already? How does he have code? Oh, no, he doesn't. <laughs> this is template. 
Okay, <laughs> makes a lot more sense. I was gonna say, wow. Um, all right, looks like Dominator's starting on subsequences of length two. Let's check. Is that the 500? When no more than K replacements that maximizes the number of currents of T in S as a substring. Is T, the length of T is two. I guess that simplifies things quite a bit. So I guess this is this looks a lot like a, just a pretty straightforward DP. I've solved it. Looks like a DP. Looks like you care about your index and ah, and it looks yep yep looks like he thinks the same thing. You care about your index and the number of moves you have left, and the number of matches you have. I guess maybe you store the number of matches. Um yeah, so he's doing n by k. Yes, so Dominator is doing, which problem is this? This is the 500, Dominator's on the 500. All right, how about Amoeba? Amoeba is not doing the 500. 43C, what is LC? Leak code? I'm not sure what Amoeba is working on. Ah, there it is, 140 or 1430C. Okay, let's see what problem that is. This is the finals, everybody. Are you hyped? Are you as hyped as I am? Um, okay, 1430C. It's numbers on whiteboard. This is the 100. Amoeba's on the 100 right now. Each of the numbers are written in a board. In one operation, you can erase any two numbers and replace with their mean rounded up. You want to perform the operation n minus 1 times and make the resulting thing as small as possible. Um, so you do all of the evens first, I guess. Yeah, I guess evens odds. Oh, I guess you, so you're just keep the evens together and then you do the odds until they, yeah, I guess two odds rounded together could be an odd, right? So what do you do in that case? We will watch and see. So he's saying if there's at least one odd, delete the last two odds. These aren't sorted. So just take two odds and add the total back in. Otherwise, take two evens. It doesn't matter, he claims. Uh, I can believe it. Oh, because, yeah, if you add two odds together, you get an even number. So you don't actually lose anything. And what if they both have size one? You're missing that case, right? He can't hear me. Don't worry. But I think you're missing the case where they both have size one still. Yes, it's always two. I don't know what's always two. There is no reason to do all this work when you... Can just do what I said. What did you say? I'm not sure. I don't know what you said. Wait, why is it always two? What's always two? 
do not just do n, n minus 2. Wait, is it a permutation? Hang on, is it a permutation? Oh. Oh, okay, yeah, you're right. It's a permutation. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, it looks like he's doing something similar to this, right? He's just not thinking, Liam. Like, what he's doing, it looks like it's just, um, he's doing the evens and the odds together. Oh, but the answer is always two. Yeah, okay. His numbers, yeah, I guess, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Definitely, yeah, so the answer is just, oh, it's two, but you have to print how you do it. Yeah, okay. Um, how's Dominator doing? Dominator, I guess, gave up on the 500. What? I thought he was... Did he get the DP? I guess he gave up on the DP. Why did he give up on the DP? That was 500 points. I totally would have gone for the DP if I were him. All right. Okay, Dominator's not doing the DP. That's fine. Whatever. Now he's looking at this plus square root game. So what is this? We've got a thing where the answer is always two, and you have to figure out how to do it. And then we have another thing where it's you have plus and square root, and you can only square root if it's a perfect square, and he wants to reach level n plus one. He wants to press the square root button n times. How many times should he plus the press plus button before pressing the square root button? You not just do four plus plus square root plus plus square root a bunch of times. Interesting. I think that that must be that must be it. Here's the square root problem. So, M must be a multiple of K. Hmm? Oh, so you need your level to be a multiple of, of K. You start at level one. So you have to level up this many times. Wait, what? I don't understand the problem. Apparently he doesn't either. Uh, something else. Okay. Um, no solves yet. DP at IJK equals C, where I equals the current index, J equals which care you need to continue the word, K equals how many operations you have, C equals how many substrings you've made. Yeah, so DP at your index the character you need to continue the word. Um, that seems redundant, but plus and square root, wrong answer. Wait, why was our output so big? Oh, is there any possible output?
Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not quite sure about the DP. I'll, I'll think about it in a minute. There's only one substring of length two, though, right? So that second one doesn't matter too much. I mean, maybe that's another way of saying what I was thinking, but yeah, I'm not sure. I will think about it when we have some more time. Plus and square root, I think, is the is the priority here. Um, I wonder what Dominator is going to do now that he's gotten it wrong. Ah, did it, Amoeba get Amoeba got C? Dominator got C. Which one was C? Was C plus and square root? All right, he got it. So we don't need to think about plus and square root anymore. Well done, Dominator. Yeah, let's check what people are, are up to now. So Dominator is on difference array. And Amoeba. It's doing something. Amoeba's working on the 100 still, I think. And just coming up with a way of doing it. Yeah, Amoeba has been been stuck on the 100 for a while here. It makes a lot of sense what Dominator is doing here. He's trying to read all the problems so that whichever one gets solved on him, he doesn't lose too much. So we have JJ saying 400 is easy and Liam saying it's annoying. Is this the 400 here? 1108C? So not this one. What is 1108C? Nice garland, 200. Yeah, let's take a look at the 200. Yeah, editorial for found yourself DP. It also says they're end of the fourth greedy. I have no idea how there's a greedy, but maybe. Um, nice garland. You have a garland of N lamps. Each lamp is red, green, or blue. The color of the ith lamp is RGRB. You want to reorder some of the lamps in the garland in such a way that the ordering is nice, which means any two lamps of the same color have a distance divisible by three for them. So it's like RGB, 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 or like RBG, RBG, RBG. You want to choose the one with the minimum number of recolored lamps. Yeah, it should be pretty easy, I think. Right. Um, let's see. What's what's his approach? Yeah, you you need amoeba got the one hundred. Ooh, doesn't really matter too much, but uh, nice, nice, well done, amoeba. Um, it looks like yeah, this two hundred should be trivial, I think. Because if everything, like you have three letters, right? So once the first two letters are determined, the third letter is forced, and then the fourth letter is forced, and so on. So uh, I guess this works, but I would just copy-paste the same thing six times, to be honest. Yep, and then you, you look at the value mod n. So this should be maybe two or three more minutes. We'll switch to amoeba. So Dominator is going to get the 200. Amoeba doesn't know what he's doing now. Um, he's looking at the square root problem, which is solved, I think. This problem is solved. So he needs to look at a different problem. This is the plus or square root. Wait a minute. He's not actually working on this, is he? This is solved, right? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, 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 Amoeba. This is this is this one solved. Dominator got this one. Surely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one was this plus and square root. This is solved. 
you can't get any. Dominator got this one before you. Maybe he's working on a different one, a different problem. I'm a little scared. Uh-oh, this could be disaster. Amoeba, first, first the fault on the 100, and now... No, 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 no. Amoeba, oh no, oh no. Oh. I'm scared, oh boy. Can we ping him? I don't, I feel like we shouldn't. That'd be cheating. Don't, don't ping him. But that's really disappointing. Yeah, yeah, no pinging allowed. Blob sweat. <laughs> uh, all right, well, let's watch Dominator take it home then. Looks like he's got the, the three permutations fixed, and now he checks the thing mod three. You got it. I believe in you, man. Oh, was it single test case? Yeah, that's what he had wrong. Okay, this is why you don't use Code Chef IDE, right? You can just run it locally. All right, so Amoeba has a problem, and that is Dominator is too good. Oh, Amoeba switch. All right, all right, check Amoeba. Amoeba, is, did he switch? Amoeba, we'll see when Dominator solves. Okay, yeah, it's true. That might actually be good for him. Maybe he has Discord open right now in his other other window. Did Dominator get it? Dominator probably got it. It's pretty hard to get this problem wrong, I think. It's a pretty easy problem, I think. Bro, he already got it. Oops. <laughs> okay, good. You figured that one out. All right, what's Dominator on now? So Dominator has the 200 and 300. Amoeba has the 100. Yeah, we're good. We're good. All right, fantastic. Um... So it looks like he's doing the DP. So he started the DP and then he he stopped maybe. Dominator got the two. I'm definitely right. I think so. He must have. Oh, did he not? Yeah, yeah, he got it. Dominator got it. Yeah. Okay. So so what's left here? Let's take take inventory. We got the 400 and the 500, and Dominator just needs either of them. So if Dominator gets one of them, he wins. So if I were him, I would read both problems and come up with a solution plan for both. And Amoeba has to solve... Well, does Amoeba only have to solve one? That's a good question. Dominator... I, I don't think Dominator should go for the 400. I think Dominator should read both. Right? How much time's left? 10 minutes? Ah, maybe you're right. Well, yeah, yeah, I guess Dominator should go for the 400. That's probably the best play. You're right. Um, okay, so Dominator's going for Difference Array, which is the 400, so he's making the right play probably. Even if he knows Amoeba solving the 500, um, he should probably go for the 400 because, well, uh, maybe not. You should go for whichever one's easier. So if you assume 400 is easier than 500, then you should go for 400. Amoeba is forced to go for the 500 because the 400 doesn't, or does it? What if Amoeba gets the 400? Yeah, 400 does not really anything for Amoeba. Could be. Could be debugging. Could be he didn't really, like, he didn't fully figure it out. Hopefully Amoeba's solving 500. We can check. That would definitely be exciting. If Amoeba gets the 500, that'd be epic. It looks like he's going for it. So the real question is whether Dominator has the solution for, for the 400 here. I guess not yet. All right, let's, let's see. 
You have an array of non-negative integers and you're guaranteed it's sorted from small to large. For each operation, we generate a new array B, which is the difference between adjacent elements. Then we sort them from small to large and replace A with B and decrease N by one. So you start with one, 100, or one, 10, 100, then you have 99, and then you have the adjacent differences. Okay, and what's, what is it? The answer is what it is at the end. That's what you're going for. Um, ooh, that's kind of a tricky problem, isn't it? How do you do this? Well, you can uh, notice that all the numbers are very limited in size. So you can likely do some sort of um, brute force. What are you brute forcing? Like you just simulate what happens. Oh, and they get small fast? Yeah, because um, the numbers aren't very large. Ah, so yeah, you just have to like stop when you have a, like, or like skip all the zero minus zero computation, right? Because the sum of the elements will decrease by quite a bit every time. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Some kind of brute force based on zeros. Yeah, and it's log. That sounds about right. Because if you have evenly separated numbers after one, after one iteration, you'll have a bunch of things that are all the same. And after a second iteration, you'll have a bunch of zeros. So yeah, I guess a two-pointer brute force would be right. This kid's smart. How about Amoeba? How's Amoeba doing? I don't see much. I don't know if Amoeba is going down the DP route. If he's not, I don't know how he's going to get there. So if Dominator gets this, he wins, but we're running really low on time here. Um, at 5 p.m., which is now, we have five minutes left. So there's five minutes for him to solve the problem. Otherwise, it's over. It is about as close as it gets. <laughs> If Dominator gets his problem, he wins. If Amoeba gets his and Dominator doesn't, Amoeba wins. But Amoeba has to code an entire DP in five minutes, which is tough at best. It's like Dominator's going through his code. Uh... Binary searching for the first zero each time. I guess that makes sense. And then he's like partially sorting it, yeah. Back to Amoeba. Um, yeah, so it looks like he's got the DP solution now, but he has like three minutes left. Can you do this in three minutes? I know I can't. This would take me probably 10 or 15 at least. But, but who knows? All right, yeah, yeah, like three, three, four minutes left. It looks like not only does he have to code it, he also kind of has to figure out some implementation details because he's not fully there yet either. So DP IJK is for some prefix if you've used J moves and I 
don't think you need to store the number of occurrences, do you? Oh, are the substrings you're making non-continuous? That one's solved. We don't care. Oh, so yeah, subsequence. They, so they might not be continuous. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, that's about right then. All right, he's almost there. How's Dominator doing? We got like two and a half minutes left. Dominator just got to submit. Is it going to TLE? That's the question. Did he do the binary search right? I bet he's seeing to see if... Ah, uh, oh, and he's got it. That's it. Well done, Dominator. Nicely done. GG. Well done, sir. Amoeba, nice try. You were you were there till the very end. You even beat him in the last round. Well done. Congratulations, Dominator. Um, only one defeat by your finals victor. We'll see what he has to say here. He has no clue why it, why it works. I mean, I think he has a clue. <laughs> there is a, you need a pretty good intuition to know why it's fast enough. Yeah, I mean, his DP was, I, he had the right idea, I think. Okay, well, maybe not. Maybe it was harder than I thought. Yeah, you guys are crazy fast. That was very impressive. Very impressive indeed. Well done. We'll stop watching him. Congratulations, and uh, yeah, thanks to everybody for participating. I know it's not really my my contest, but it was very fun to commentate for. Are we announcing the winners here? We might be. Maybe this is a solution. All right, we got the announcements here. Um, yes, congrats to Dominator for first place. Do we have announcements for first and second place prizes? Um, first place is going to get $50 and one year of Wolfram, and second place will get 25 and one year of Wolfram. Fantastic. All right, yeah, thank you all for the organizers and the participants. Um, very, very fun event. Thank you so much for streaming. Yeah, hope to see you guys next year. All right. Bye-bye. Have a good morning.